Good afternoon to you, Trevor, and yes, a very big welcome to everyone uh, listening in this afternoon for us for 5 RM Football back for another year. 2024 is here. I'm pretty excited, Trevor Scott. I'm not sure about you, good self. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, it is a lovely, yeah, it is a lovely sunny afternoon here at the Lakeside over Limbarmara and good news, our man on the ground, Trevor Nobby Norton is on the ground himself. Nobby, good afternoon to you. G'day Lockie, g'day Trev, g'day everyone tuning into uh, 5RM Riverland Football for the first time in 2024. Hey Lockie, I'm out here, I've got the key in the pitch and uh, it's gone right in, but it's not in a crack, so I will be able to get the car keys <laughs> out and drive home. Um, no, Oval in perfect condition. A little, uh, would you say, uh, I'm, I'm thinking if it's a horse racing track, it's a soft five, which is just a little bit of give in the ground. So uh, that's nice. Uh, both sides out here on the Oval uh, warming up. Remark down at the uh, play space end, Barmer at the change room end, both doing their warm-ups. And also the men in green out here doing their warm-ups in the middle. I've had to get out of the way before they bounce the ball on me. Yeah, the umpires is always a very important part of Riverland football. Uh, Nobby, you did say both sides out there doing the yep. warm-ups. We know Barmer and Monash have got a couple of inclusions for the year. Renmark Rovers have also got a couple of new players for this year and a debut nonetheless today, which is always exciting. The number eight for the Rovers, uh, William Grokey running yep. out for the first time this year and his A-grade career, exciting stuff. Yep, and add to that the return of Nick Gillard and uh, Nathan Zunick back. And I think Gillard and Zunick will be their avenues to goal today because a couple of their big blokes are lining up in the two blues instead of the blue and white. Well, we have spoken about the uh, double blue magnet in the off-season and it's uh, secured a couple more players from the Royal Blue of the Renmark Rovers in the off-season, Nobby. And yeah, we're talking, about, right now. we're talking about the Austin brothers, aren't we, Lockie? Yes, uh, Dane, Jack and Thomas all yep. out there today. Yep, And uh, but the really good news for those uh, Barnum and Monash Brews uh, followers is that the Junkyard Dog's back out here. I'm not standing too far away from Jake. He's just giving me the thumbs up and he is looking well. Yep, no, he's always uh, good to see. And I tell you what, he's uh, up and about. He's looking fit for a player that, you know, a couple of years ago, Nobby was... I don't know, toying with the idea of maybe just stepping back to the twos. He's been reinvigorated in yeah, recent not years. Not anymore. That, uh, that premiership last year <laughs> certainly uh, kept them hungry for another. And not only them, not only Jake Smith, but also I noted Chris Bonney back out in, uh, in Barmer Monash Colours, returning to football after a layoff. And, uh, but he won't lack any fitness because he's been running marathons in his uh, time away from football. Yeah, certainly a fitness machine. He would have had the best part of a decade away from football. Nobby, I'm going to even say maybe even more. A very talented junior. We all know the story. Uh, look, a couple of very significant injuries. Just maybe put footy on the uh, the back burner for a bit. Got the body right, and now it's time to have a crack. Well, talking about getting the body right, Lockie, and uh, of course Chris uh, was just on the cusp of a sample league career. Um, at the time, he, then he came back to Riverland and did his knee. But I'm telling you, he's out here with absolutely nothing on either leg in terms of bandaging and moving well. Perhaps a, a couple of players missing from the Barnum Monash lineup that we we sort of thought would sooner or later make their way here, and they probably still will. Is Mason Middleton and John O' Beach? Yeah, both big signings in the off season, uh, not lining up today. Uh, Nobby, this is a grand final replay for those yep. unaware. The Roos are the reigning premiers. That side last year was built a lot on defence. We know new coach for last year, Fraser Sampson, he's coaching again this year in his second season. He played to his strengths last year. He knew what he had to work with. They built a team on defence and a few people questioned it. A lot of people laughed at it, but the Roos were the ones that ended up laughing the most, winning the Premiership. Those inclusions in the off-season, are we going to see a bit more of an attacking style, you think? Well, I think the difference between the two sides was last year, Renmark being the reigning premiers were the hunted, and Barnum and Monash Roos were the hunters. Well, the roles have reversed now, and now Barnum and Monash become the hunted. So it'll be interesting to see how they cope with the pressure of other teams coming after them rather than the other way around. Certainly looking forward to it. Only a couple of minutes away from the first siren of the 2024 Riverland Football League Premiership season. Of course, all the action right here at 5RM. Thanks to the Riverland Motor Group and the Ford Ranger. You can test drive Australia's number one Ford Ranger today at Riverland Ford East Terrace, Loxton. 
Both sides having their final addresses, Nobby. I haven't actually seen a toss of the coin. They yet. haven't done that yet, Lockie. And interesting, you mentioned the Riverland Motor Group with the Ford Ranger. It's not only the number one Ford car, it's the number one car sold in Australia. Very exciting stuff. Uh, what are we going to see in the way of a coin toss here, Nobby? Well, Just trying to work out what is it's, happening. Uh, the siren's gone a second time. Still no one in to toss the coin. Maybe they... Uh, Maybe they decided it before they came out, but I find that highly unlikely unless we didn't see it, Lockie, but no. Nah. Um, the Bowman Monash group still staying huddled together at the club room's end and the, the predominantly all the Remark guys at the uh, play space end, but I think the leaders are coming in to, for the toss. Maybe the whole lot of them are going to get around it. Look a bit like... Uh, Look a bit like a two-up game on Anzac Day, which is coming up next week. Yeah, look, it is a... Uh, and just on that, Nobby, it of course, uh, Anzac Day this coming Thursday. Uh, Riverland Netball, of course, that gets underway next Friday. Can't wait for that. But just the crowd here today, Nobby. It is a glorious day here in the Riverland, as always. Autumn really does turn it on, and today is no different. I'm thinking we've missed the toss, Lockie, <laughs> and I can tell you which way they're kicking, though, by the personnel heading each end. Um... Barman and Monash uh, going towards the uh, club room end, I guess, by the look of the personnel lined up there. And I can't see... Now, hang on. Remark going this way, I think, because I see Nathan Zernig heading towards the club room end, and he's normally their key forward. So Barman and Monash going to the play space end. Watch when they bounce the ball and they go the opposite directions. Yeah, it looks like Chris Bonney is lining up in the ruck this afternoon. Talk about uh, welcome back to the play. Uh, Nobby, you better make a move and get off the... Oval, because uh, we've got a Riverland Football League season to get underway here at 5RM this afternoon. Uh, the ball goes up in the air. Renmark get the tap. Good tap from Gartree, but it's the uh, Ruse that managed to dive on it, hold it in, and uh, we'll have another ball up. As uh, my offsider from the commentary box, Nobby Norton, makes his way back up the stairs. Uh, little clearance, quick clearance from the Rovers, but it was intercepted by the Ruse. They take the ball to the Main Street side, and... Uh, the Ruse just hold it up on the far wing here this afternoon. Nobby has now returned to the commentary box, which is great to see. Mark up to centre-half forward. Not, no one able to mark it. Taken over the boundary line. We'll get a ball in. Nobby Norton, welcome back. Yeah, thanks, Lockie. Just had security get me through the crowd and back up to the uh, central <laughs> missionary yeah, position. Yeah, central commentary, commentary, commentary position. position. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been listening to a bit too much 12th man in the off-season, Nobby. Uh, we better move on. It's uh, ball back on centre-half forward for the bar from Monash Roos. No one able to move it too far. Yeah, nil all draw at the moment. Yeah, still uh, no score. A minute gone on the clock this afternoon. First kick into the 50, but it's intercepted by Trevor Thorpe, the veteran from the Rovers. He brings it lakeside and finds Zunik, centre-half back. Remark Rovers have mixed it up a little bit in the off-season, Nobby. Of course, I did get the directions uh, kicking wrong, Lockie, which was a 50-50 chance, and I managed to muck it up. Remark heading towards the play space end, taking it down the half-forward flank. Cross into the middle of the ground, looking for a key forward, but cut off by a Barman Monash player, which is Justin Bonney. Takes the ball, looks back up the middle. Yep, the uh, Rovers get a couple of hands in there, but the Roos managed to make a couple of quick handballs. All couldn't quite pick it up. That was young Albrecht from the Roos. He gets a handball wide. Can the Roos dive on this? No, they can't. Harrison Brown for the Rovers kicks it into the 50. It's still a hot footy. Rovers take the ball on. And a wild kick back in board that from was, Gillard who didn't go Gillard. too far. His, his first touch of the ball was for the Rovers in 2024 and uh, pr had no one running with him, Lockie. I wouldn't know if I'd leave Nick Gillard alone. Small kick from the Roos, just switching pockets. That's the Barmer Monash captain, but Sam Butterworth. Interesting spread by the Roos here because they've basically just spread far and wide. Tell you what, Nobby, no score at the moment. This is very much shades of that last year's grand final. What, you mean nil all score? Well, <laughs> when you win a grand final with a total score of 35, <laughs> you know there's a pretty good defence. Yeah, I don't think that'll be the case here today. <laughs> nice open ground, good conditions, and plenty of people deciding to get involved. And another ball up. Looks like uh, we're going to get a ball in from the Rovers' half-forward flank, Townside. Yeah, great crowd in too, Lockie. First uh, first bit of RFL footy for the season and everyone's out having a look. Ball spills out the back from the ball in. Chris Bonney in the ruck for the bruise again. It doesn't go too far and we'll have another another ball up. Nice little sea breeze coming in this afternoon from the lake. Oh, just quickly the Rovers go on the attack. Kick into the 50. Can that make it all the way home? Touched on the line. 
Yep, no, uh, no need for the goal, goal right cameras there, Lockie. That was clearly touched and a rush behind for the first score of the game. Remark, one point. Barmer Monash yet to score, yet to take it past centre into their forward lines. Quick kick out into the back pocket. On the ball goes from the from the Rouge out to the half-back. A drill by the looks. Two kicks, and now they have the ball on the half-back flank town side. Just getting the uh, players to move around a little bit. Spilios with the footy. Pretty vital in last year's grand final. He was. And the half-forward, half-back flank for the Ruse rather, but there's an interception, and the Rovers take it back into the attack, into the attacking 50. Breeze definitely favouring that play space in that Remark Rovers are kicking to. Quite, uh, you know, just a zephyr, but enough, I'd say, a goal or two in it. Couple of loose disposals. There's Wolford. He kicks it like a bit of a small pitching wedge. Doesn't go too far. And the Ruse get a free. Yeah, Liam Jackson uh, attacking that player without his eye on the ball. Gave away the free kick. Barmer quick out of defence to half back. Yeah, that was Butterworth with another kick. And the Ruse just like to chip it up the far wing. That is the defensive side of the ground over there when you're kicking into the breeze. You can see the, the Aussie flag flapping a bit there on the far side. Jake Smith kicks it long. No one able to mark it. Tap forward. And there's Drogamola for Rem the Ruse. Remark with a, with a player behind the ball loose, so had to give the hands, couldn't kick it. Wolford there for the Rovers. Got his hands on the interception handball, but taken to ground quickly and will get a ball up just outside the centre square, the uh, Ruse end. Umpire Grummet hurls the ball into the air. Once again, Remmark getting the hit out through Gartery. But Doesn't going be. nowhere. It'll it's be, let's do that again. This is 5RM football for the Riverland Motor Group. And Test Drive Australia's number one Ford Ranger today. Riverlandford.com.au. Chris Bonney first hands on the ball there. Tried to take it out of the pack, but another ball up. Third ball up in the row. Free kick coming, Lockie, you think? That was your formula last year. Gartry taps forward. Jake Smith comes out on his unusual foot, on his right foot. Mark that one down. He doesn't kick many of them in a year. The, Sends the ball forward. The Roos look hungry. Can they centre this? Spills over the... Spills to the far side. No one able to get that one. And we'll get a ball in. Full pocket for the Roos. This is a, a stoppage that could result in a score for Barman Monash if they can get their hands on the ball first. And up in ruck for Barman Monash. Mitch Wellington taking the throw in against Gartery. Gartery winning it. Out to Wolford, Tim, who clears the line, but only as far as a Barman Monash player on the half forward line, which is yeah. Jamison Whitbourne. Whitbourne now with the footy, looks to drive it into the attacking 50. There's no one home, oh. and a great mark from the Ruse. And I reckon that's Mitch Wellington that's yep. taken that one. A little bit of a one-arm one uh, Inspector Gadget mark, but if yeah. he hadn't have taken it, it would have hit the next Barman Monash player right on the chest. Un the two of them unmanned. Unmanned. First set shot of the day, six minutes gone. First quarter Riverland football on 5RM. Just inside the right-hand post, Mitch, and this will be a certainty. Wellington sends it on its way. It looks the goods. Touched on the line. No, that's in. That's, that's true. a goal. Exactly as predicted. Lockie aimed at that right-hand post. The breeze just brought it back into the middle. And there we have the first goal of the game to Barma Monash to Mitch Wellington. So it's the ruse that lead. Six to one at this stage. They have a five-point lead. What are we, nearly seven minutes gone. First quarter, Riverland football, 5RM. Well, you'd say, uh, having kicked that goal so early in the game, that's so button bar monish like Normally it's five for the match. They've got one already. Yeah, might be time to park, you know, <laughs> park the bus a little bit. No, Fraser Sampson at quarter time, the coach, I'm not sure what he wants to say. But well, the 6-6-6 rule prevents that to start with, but once the ball's up, look out. Whoa! Umpire missing that one, unsighted, but uh, Barman Monash player trying to tear out of the middle with that ball. Caught a little high, but gets up all right. Yeah, Jared Rowe there for the Rovers, once again in and amongst it. And there's Wolford. Dan gets a wild kick away. There's but, Sampson. Uh, Fraser Sampson for the Roos. Ooh. Good steady kick. Gets a, a nice little, gets a nice little, how are you going from Jared Rowe? Sat him on his trousers after he got rid of it. Just trying to see what's going to go on here, and it's the... This is Harrison Beavis bringing the ball into the middle, but it's all contest football here. One-on-ones everywhere. Jack Albrick gets first handle on it, but can't keep it in bounds, and it goes out of bounds on centre wing, club room side. Taken over. So we'll get a... Oh, no. Of course, yeah. Disposal. Last disposal rule. 
Ricky Garrett back for the Rovers. And he's been another player, Nobby, that we've kind of missed. He's back this year. Well, he's back after a year off with injury, and he was uh, instrumental in their well, last premiership. Lockie. The 20... I'm two of the sums. Yeah, 2022 grand final. He was best on ground. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yep. And one of our favourites, too. And no... no uh, Bandages or anything on him either, so he's looking as fit as a fiddle as well. Ball taken by Mitch Wellington in the middle of the ground, having a run on the ball, but picks out the unmarked Josh Vader in the back line, who takes no time in getting that ball moving over to Matt Wilford, out to the far side wing. Yep, and it's taken over the boundary. No, it just holds it in. It's almost like a mini-league game they're playing across the centre. It's a little bit like that. And they goal sticks both sides on the wings. The Rovers just holding it for a second. Just trying to work out. Got a couple of number changes. Back into the middle program. to Wellington. Gets the handball out. Ooh. And that was Watke, I reckon, yep. there, taking the ground for the Roos. They're so. Holding the ball. Incorrect disposal. Remark will take this. Forward they go. Here's yep. Brown. Couple of quick handballs. Can out the to... Rovers make something out of this? Jared Rowe marks it on the 50. He'd be too far from home, one would have thought, Nobby. That was Dan Wolford getting that ball forward, and he's been instrumental early. Nice kick in, but cut off by the Barham Monash defender. It's the Ruse now trying to work this one out. A hot footy once again. Dan Wolford taken to ground. I would say if you're keeping tackle stats here today at the Lakeside, uh, Remark racking up the tackles, putting Barmer under pressure. Yeah, Jack Albrecht in amongst it again, Nobby, for the Ruse this afternoon. That would be Kingston on Murray's Jack Albrecht, Lockie. No one able to get a clear tap away. Chris Bonney gets a wild kick out of the ruck. Trevor Thorpe for the Rovers tries to pick that one up. Couldn't get a handball to it. And now the Roos try and work this one down the lakeside wing. Looking for a target. Reese Lehman over the back. Good. Loose footy still soccer's forward. Keeps it moving turn. towards the goals, but Remark back in it? numbers. Josh Vader there first. And Vader takes it over the line, and I reckon this might be a ball in. Yep. I don't know if he got away with that in the AFL for an in, for attempt to keep it in Lockie, but here we are at lakeside, and it's okay. It's a uh, hot footy, that's for sure. So a ball in. 30 around from the Ruse goal. Mitch Wellington does the ruck work, taps it forward, tries to rove it himself, but it's the Rovers that get a wild kick away. Justin Bonney looks up in the middle. And uh, just a little bit of feeling out there. Legged. Seeing what's going on. I think it might have been an errant kick. It struck him in the leg, I think. That's what he was talking about, the umpire. Bonnie drives it into the middle of the ground, looking for oh. Reese Lehman. Oh, had the perfect sit, but could not one grab it. It was in his hands out in front of him. Perfect kick. Could not bring it in, Reese. Tapped it forward. Jared Rowe for the ruse. Doesn't quite get it. Tackled. Forward. Maybe a little bit unfair. Forward goes Aiden line to a vacant Barramona square and finds only a Remark defender, which is Tim Blight. Blight takes it. Townside. Matt Smith, the new player, lucky for Remark. Back to the, uh, been in around the club a while, yeah. I think. They played reserves for a Ooh, while. Reese there. Lehman, that's a better contest. Up amongst two Remark players. Prevents the easy mark in defence and brings the ball to ground for a contest. That's what Barma and Monash are looking for from, from Lehman. A contest in the forward lines to give their ground players a chance. 11 and a half minutes gone. First quarter of Riverland Football, 5RM, Riverland Motor Group. RiverlandFord.com.au. You can book a test drive today. Australia's number one Ford Ranger. Number one car, Lockie. Ruse now, bomb it into there, attacking 50. Can someone mark it? Trying to see who's home. No one. And it's Zunik, the S usual forward for the Rovers. He clears yeah. it out. Picking up a stack of possessions. That was hands in the back there. That'll be a Barham and Monash free kick. Played the advantage, the umpire. Trying to move it forward. There's Garrett. Small kick over the top. Finds Wesley. Out of range, I think. Lockie going into that breeze. He's going to kick from 53 out. He's got a long way. There'll be two kicks from... From him there to get that through the big ones. Small kick. No takes, closer to goal. Takes a little bit further in. To the ruse now. Wheels around. Bombs it to the square. Will this one fly it over the back? No. Through Fine for a rush corner. behind. And that is Barman Monash 1-1-7. Leading Remark one point. Ball comes out quickly from Remark. On to Vader, getting plenty of it, Vader and Wolford. Could, Wolford couldn't quite hang on to that, but he goes back and gets it. No one able to get their hands on it. Seeing a little bit of, I wouldn't say clumsy footy knobby, but a little, not quite clean, is it? You'd say early football, early yes, season yes. football. <laughs> Blowing out the cobwebs. Oh, up and down before, 
before uh, acceptance is there, Chris Bonney. Uh, Lucky um, not to give away a free kick. A ball up on the bummer end of the centre square. No one able to mark it. That one, no one able to get a hand on it. Goes straight back to ground. And who should try and get it out of there? But the junkyard dog trying to get the ball forward. A little bit of uh, rugby union action going on here, Nobby. A bit of a rolling scrum. Which is just right up his alley. Taps, no one able to get their hand on it once again. Seeing some willing work in the ruck today. Everyone's having a crack in there. Harrison Brown. He started it. off very well too, as has Wilford, who got that handball wide. Oh, intercepted. Great bit of play there from the... I reckon that might be... Luke Thomas, Luke number Thomas, 20. yeah. Back to the ruse after a season a few years ago. Yeah. You'd say when he last played, he was one of the premier backmen in the whole competition. And he started off exactly how he finished here last time round. Ooh. Rover's got a bit of a getaway then, but it was held up pretty quickly. It's a bit yeah. of an ongoing thing every yeah, time the Rovers... Grummet saw the don't argue from the junk, junkyard dog there and gave away a free kick he did to Remark, who drive it forward. Nice oh, kick. Great mark. That's Alex Haynes. He yeah. bombs it into the attacking 50 for the Rovers. Can someone mark it? No, over the back. Rovers have got to make something out of this. There's Wolford. He got a hand up ball wide. Spins around. Nice kick in. That's straight over the goal umpire's head. That was Gillard. That was Gillard. There you go. That's, as I said earlier, mate, don't, you can't afford to give him space. Hit the post, was it? Oh. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, it looked a goal from here. I was watching the umpire, and it was look, he was looking over his head, straight over his head, and I thought, hello, here we go, a goal. That would have been the goal of the day. But, Gee, nice uh, kick. Kick out from the ruse. The Rovers managed to get it again. Oh, great bit of uh, nice play there for Zunig. Nice one Zunig takes the ball back and bombs it into the forward line. Can the Rovers make something out of this? A couple of quick handles, a wild kick away. Umpire says play on. Kicks up to centre half back for the Ruse. And Dean they take Wesley, it I again. drives it wide. Ooh, Smith Mark unable to down. mark it. Gets a hand on it. Rolls along the ground. What will the Ruse do with this? No one to give it to. Handles back into a vacant midfield only to find... Wolford, who moves it forward cleverly, now in the hands of the big fella, Zach Gardu, who bombs in a long one towards the goal square. No. Barmer come out with it. Numbers back there, Lockie. No one able to mark it. They bring the ball up to the lakeside wing, but there's a couple more Rovers than Roos here. It's a bit like a game of end-to-end. -end. Finds Gartry. That was a wild odd kick towards the attacking 50. It's still well rolling along the ground. Nice work. Uh, nice attack on the ball by the Barmer Monash player there. It's the Ruse that managed to get it up. and Back to Mitch Jenke on the wing. He'll get the free. Yeah. What are we rolling here? Around 16 minutes played. First quarter Riverland football on 5RM for the Riverland Motor Group. Test driver, Ford Ranger today. Or Jenke or Monday. takes it up to the flank, but it's the Ruse that managed to get them uh, hands on it. Chris Bonney taking that mark in the back play, but turned over to his opposing ruckman, Gartery, who shovels out the handball to Jenke again. Looks inside, but a lot of traffic in there. And that's Wesley with the ball. He had the ball high, and he was taken without it after he got rid of it. So it'll be a free kick for Dan Wesley on the halfback flank for Barma Monash. You say Spilios had the great kick off halfback yeah. then to only go straight to the <laughs> opposing one thing, I, one thing I am noticing, Lockie, not too many rotations from the boundary on a hot day like today. I would have thought that would have been prime. Here's Whitbourne with the footy. I reckon the, the junkyard dog's looking for a spell, but there's no one lined up to take his place. The lakeside wing. Whitbourne just goes straight down the line, looks for a target. Lehman got his hands on it, but it spills forward. Finds Zunik. Touch number 400 already this afternoon. Yep. Gets it on to Vader. This is the Rovers of old. They take it up to centre-half forward. Can someone take a mark? Oh, nice mark, Haynes. They can. Alex Haynes, centre-half forward for the Rovers. Can he, he looks, make something out of this? He looks good playing up the ground, doesn't he, at centre-half forward? He's given him a target. That's two nice uh, marks he's taken on the 50 going forward. I reckon, he's in, I reckon this is in his wheelhouse, this distance, Lockie. I like the Rovers. This, I mean, we've only seen it for what, structure. 17 minutes, but they've changed it up. Yeah, it's a different structure. Without the big fellas, without the big Austin boys forward, he's virtually the lone tall target, and he's having to having to cover ground, and he looks better out and about. He'll be kicking from all the 50 out. Alex Haynes from the Rovers sends it on its way. Distance it's a straight not a kick. problem. Accuracy not a problem. That's a goal. That's a goal. And the Rovers hit the front. Yep. One goal, 2-8, leading Barma Monash, 1-1-7, one, one, a one-point game. Alex Haynes, the uh, full forward revelation of 2024. You're going to call it, Nobby? It's pretty early, but... 
I, look, I don't think anyone would have put him in for their top goal scorer for the year. I like the way they've structured up with him being their, their probably their lone tool, with the exception of maybe uh, maybe Tim Blight, who's spending a bit of time in ruck. But uh, what they're using is Haynes is starting sort of 10 yards, 10 metres forward of the 10 metre square and coming up the ground and leaving all that space for Gillard to work into. And if Gillard hadn't hit the post before, which was a very close thing, uh, Remark would have ripped the rewards of what I think is about a two-goal breeze, Lockie. So another ball up in the middle. Gets towards the Barmer at half forward, but it's Vader on half back for the Rovers that says, boys, come with me. We're going to get another goal in the next five minutes. Takes the ball, town side wing. No one able to get it on half forward for the Rovers, and it's the Ruse that managed to pick this one up and bring it lakeside. Reese Lehman, the one that got his hands to it. He was wrapped up, holding the ball. They're all yeah, asking for it. Incorrect disposal. Had plenty of time to get rid of that, and unfortunately couldn't get rid of it. Blight on Lehman and doing a reasonable job. Tim Blight just calling for an option. Straight down the line, probably the smart move. Haynes flies high, unable to mark it. And He's really over. given him a target, isn't he? Yeah, Ford. oh, look. I think he's standing one of his former teammates as well this afternoon, one of the Austin boys. So that's a bit one to watch there, Nobby. Do you reckon you wouldn't mind miking him up, Lockie, to oh, see what's excited. going on out there? I, I reckon I saw Zunik maybe cup, have a couple of words before, just quietly. You think it would be a little bit of banter going on? Trent Ogle <laughs> tries to break away, and unfortunately he's put that out off a kick. That'll be a free kick to Remark half forward. Quickly bring it back in. Vader again. Gee whiz. No, it's not Vader, sorry. It's Tim Wolford this time. Uh, Tim Wolford takes it long. Are they looking for a target? Nice ball by Barmer Monash. In the pocket. Mitch Jenke dives on it, holds it in. Some great defensive forward work. Sorry, William Groke, Grokey there, yep. the debutante this afternoon. Look, the interesting thing about the centre bounces, and the last one we saw here is, uh, is we have Wolford Matthew playing at half back, and every time he gets a possession, he's finding Vader, who's driving it forward. This will be something for Fraser Sampson to consider at quarter time, if, he, if not before. Garrett. On to Jackson, back, gets the footy back, takes it up to the forward line. Deep in forward for the Rovers. Can they make something out of this? A wild handball. And one behind only. A behind there to Declan Johnson from the Rovers. Yep, and here we are at uh, Riverland Motor Group, Riverland Football. The score is Remark 139, leading Barmer Monash 117. You'd say nothing decided yet, Lockie. We've got a game on our hands. Yep. Which we thought we were going to have. Barmer bring it out of half back up to centre wing, town side, but cut off there by Dan Wolford. Shoots it into the middle to, to Blight. He's come off his man. Trevor Thorpe through the middle. Here they come down the middle, Remark. Finds the ruse at half back, though, and they manage to clear it out. They love taking oh. the footy town side, the ruse, and they're going to get caught out pretty soon if they don't change it up. So get a few behind the ball here, trying to hang on to a quarter time, Lockie, with only uh, a couple of minutes, less than that, 10 seconds to go. Yep. Shoots it into the middle. That'll be the last possession of the, of the quarter. Butterworth takes the pitching wedge approach. Managed to get a couple of players, but it's the Rovers now that managed to go on the rebound. Can they make something in the dying seconds of the first quarter here this afternoon? Dan Wolford shooting that ball forward from halfback. It's not quite a stopper. Jump umpire says play on. Thomas gets the ball out for the Barmer Monash Ruse and finds Justin Bonney. I'm thinking of the two teams, Remark have definitely structured up much better using the ball off half back in the uh, rebound phase. Bonney drives it straight down the line, still town side wing over the boundary, and we'll get a ball in, I reckon. It is 5RM football for the Riverland Motor Group. 20 seconds to go in the quarter, Lockie, so all but over. Comes in for... Boundary umpire throwing it in from the centre wing, town side. I would safely say no one is going to score in the rest of this quarter. Winds maybe starting to increase a little bit too. Unless, of course, the ump deals out of 50. <laughs> yeah, it was Bonnie in the ruck. Oh, Decky Johnson with the footy on the 50. Oh! And that could have been another scoring shot for the Rovers, but it's not to be the... Uh, First quarter wraps up. It's the uh, visiting Renmark Rovers, 139 to Barmer Monash, 117. 5 in football for the Riverland Motor Group this afternoon. Live from the Lakeside Oval in Barmer, Trevor Scott back in the Sideline View studio. We have a game on our hands today.
Looking forward to getting some more scores through this afternoon when we can. At the moment, it is the Renmark Rovers who lead 139 to the Bummer and Monash Roos at 117. Nobby, an interesting first quarter. Yep, and goal kickers for both sides. Easy for me to keep tabs on at this stage, Lockie. First goal of the match going to Bummer and Monash is Mitch Wellington. The answering goal from Renmark's Alex Haynes. So they're the two goal kickers. Best player... Players that have done, uh, that have stood out to me, Dan Wesley for Barra Monash has been very good. Sam Butterworth, his normal good self. And uh, apart from that, I thought Reese Lehman had his moments. If he'd, if the ball had stuck to his hands a bit, he would have been high in my best players. For Renmark, much easier to find. I thought Harrison Brown's quarter was good. Dan Brown's quarter, Dan Wolford's quarter was good. Matthew Wolford, excellent. And coach Josh Vader also had a good quarter. And like the way Alex... Haynes led up and gave them an option going forward. Be interesting to see how he goes into the breeze this time. Yeah, certainly a bit of an exciting one. Alex Haynes up forward for the Renmark Rovers. We must remember, no stranger to the forward line. If that resting ruck rock, uh, resting ruck roll, Nobby, yep. we did see him in the forward lines a few times. But now being, as you said, the what appears to be the number one target. Well, I think that almost, uh, I mean, and we know how good a ruckman Zach Gardery is, best in the league without a doubt, and played in the SA countryside last year. But I'm almost thinking that the rucks are almost insignificant at the moment. And I think that around the ground, Bonnie will take more marks than Gardery will. So that's where Barmer are playing. But no, Barmer without a recognised ruckman again. So another ball up, second quarter underway, Riverland football on 5RM, it's Vader that gets the clearance and bombs it into the attacking 50, can Haynes mark this, he can't quite do it, but it spills forward to Jackson, can he get the crumbs, no, it's the Roos that dive on it, and we'll get a ball up I think, no, umpire says play on, and another tackle, too high, and that is Jamison Whitbourne that's going to get the free. Would you say uh, a little bit of a WWF wrestling match between Haynes and uh, former teammate Jack Austin there, Lockie? Could be a little bit going on. And there was uh, the t Campbell Marks there with the uh, yeah. back end of the ruse this afternoon as well. Yeah, playing a fair few young blokes. Ogle, um, also him, and, and Jamison Whitbourne. Good young contingent. Tim Wolford drives the ball into the forward line. Over the, over the top was back. Thomas, but he's let, he hasn't brought it in. And as a result, Rema, uh, Barmer one short on the ground. What's going to happen here? Still deep in the Rovers attacking 50. And we'll get a ball up. Umpire Kosolke says, my yeah. footy. He gave him plenty of chance to get it out, but they couldn't. So he balls it up right in the forward lines. Taps forward, but it manages to find the ruse from the Barmer Monash variety Thomas that clear Austin it out. comes out, but two on one. Remark's favour. Ball spills forward. Trevor Thorpe couldn't quite get a handle on it, but he gets it clear of the pack to Vader. Vader's pop it goal, and that is a goal. That's a cracking goal. And there, that is a that is a coach's goal. I'd say a captain's goal, but uh, a coach's goal this afternoon. And the Rovers back in town. Is early, it Rovers of old. Early days yet, Lockie, but I would say he's the most influential player on the ground. He's yeah, certainly doing a lot at the moment, that's for sure. Covering plenty of ground and also putting it on the scoreboard. So Josh Vader, the yep. Renmark Rovers playing coach with the first goal of the second quarter is 5 Aaron football for McDonald's Renmark. Do you think he's uh, had this uh, burr under his saddle since the grand final last year and he's come out here thinking, well, I'm going to show you how to beat this man. <laughs> I'm going to hunt them for a change. Oh, I, don't know. I don't know. At the end of the day, I mean, it was a pretty big grand final, of course, but uh, I think Josh has probably had another few other things going on probably to worry about <laughs> but maybe know. this morning he went all right now it's time i think he's come here with a uh, point to prove well, certainly so far it's the visiting rovers that lead 2 3 15 to barmer monash 117 yeah remark looking a bit more dangerous around the pack but but all of a sudden matt wakey who's been he's been good too hits up yep finds campbell oh. marks handles out to jake smith he gets it to the top of the 50 for the Barmer Monash Roos, but spills forward. That was there's Matt Wolford, who finds Dan Wolford. Quick handball. I reckon that's Zunick. Takes the, takes the run. Yeah, an unusual bounce. role for Zunick up ground, isn't it? And then kicks it up to the forward 50. And the Haynes, what a great mark. So he's doing a lot of damage out around that 50 arc, isn't he? That's his oh. third mark outside on the 50 line today. I'm excited by this lineup. He looks for yeah. Gillard. Goes for Ricky Garrett with the footy. Dives on it and we'll have a ball up. Would you say Ricky Garrett with a little bit of ring rust, having been out for 12 months? Yeah, I don't 
don't know. He's certainly he's finding getting his way back into it. Another one throwing us this afternoon. Zunik with the short sleeves today. Yeah, I know. He can't find him when he's out there that far. Oh, Gill up oh, on the what pocket. A kick. And that's goal of the day so far. The Rovers are back in town. Lockie, I hate to say I told you so, but that one he missed in the first quarter that shaved the post, he's only going to need five or six possessions to kick five <laughs> goals. Very this dangerous. Is, this is exciting if you're a Renmark Rovers fan yeah. so far. Adds a dimension to their game. You know, you can see they've, they've done their homework, and the, it's good coaching by Josh Fader. Using uh, Alex Haynes out around the 50 mark, which opens up the whole forward line to Nick Gillard. And let me tell you, he only needs the ball inside that 50 arc with one or two metres space. Not even that, and he can make your pay. It's 3-3-21, the Rovers to the Barmer Monash Roos, 1-1-7. The Roos need something here pretty quick, Nobby. They need to stem the flow. Yep, on the McDonald's Rimmark RFL football, uh, five-room football, Chicken McNuggets, 9.95. Lucky. Oh, sounds delicious, Nobby. So another stoppage in the centre. What are the Roos going to do here, Nobby? They trail by two in what could be a low-scoring match. I don't think it will be. Here we go. Trent Ogle with the ball out the middle. I think Barmer got to get a bit more direct with the ball. Out it comes from the centre bounce. But look where it goes. Half forward flank lakeside. Not much yeah. closer to goal and, than you were. And the frustrating thing for if you're a Roos supporter, oh, just quickly, it's Wolford with the footy on the wing. Yep. Handball's back to Thorpe. The evergreen Trevor Thorpe, you'd say. He you? looks up for Gillard, unable to mark it. Ooh, it that... Watke that got in the middle there. I reckon he might have got that uh, below the belt. And it's Rowe kicks Rowe on over the top. Declan Johnson, can he run in and kick a goal? The ball spills back. Spilios for the Roos gets a hand on it. Nice work there Managed from Barmer Monash from Aiden Lyon. Spins out of the tackle but can only find Wolford at centre half forward. Two Barmer Monash players, would you say, just catching their breath behind player out of play and no remark opponents. So Wolford's going to have a shot here. He's oh. kicked. Does he not know he's kicking in the breeze? Oh, no, the breeze has changed. Look at the flag on the other side, Lockie. Now, if they I... look like they might have had the breeze both these first quarters. So, Tim Wolford, from all of 55 out, Boom. sends it on its way. That's a good-looking kick. Boom. Distance, no oh, problem. Oh, Accuracy just off, off line for a point. Takes Remark to three goals, 4-22, leading Barmer and Monash on their first, time, first quarter score, 1-1-7. Yeah, the Roos yet to score this quarter. That's Having to bring it out the defensive side, Butterworth. Butterworth. Oh, what a catch there by Zach Guttery. And that was a catch because it was down in front of him, almost slips like, perhaps gully like, yep. building in the gully. That was Wesley for the Roos that yeah, tried to get amongst it. it there, but he wasn't going to outmark oh, Guttery. Well out of his division. We have a match up here. The Roos managed to get a couple of hands on it. There's Wesley back in the mix as well. Ball taken to ground. And we'll get another ball up. Declan Johnson getting a bit of it this afternoon yes, too. He finished last season in great form too on the scoreboard. He hit the scoreboard off and Lockie. Very strong. Row to Gillard. Gillard, another shot at goal. And From the pocket. Can Haynes mark that? Oh, he can't quite get it. Tell you what, that was... If you set a beacon right in the middle of those two goal sticks... Gillard hit every time if he made the distance. Yeah, uh, you know what is going to be concerning for a couple of other coaches? This forward duo of Gillard and Haynes, yep. if they can keep this up for this season, that's going to be pretty hard to match up on. And, and the interesting thing about Gillard is he, he doesn't look like he's a speed machine, but as soon as he gets within three metres of the ball, there's no one faster. Steps it up a couple of gears. Ball down the line. Now town side centre wing. There's Wesley again for the Roos. Gets a kick away, but some sloppy possession from the Barmer Monash side this afternoon, and we'll get another turnover. Gardery again. Starting, yeah. to, starting to put his uh, his imprint on the game, isn't he? Cross to Blight. Cross to Zunick. Zunick drives it to the wing. Gets a hand back on it. And there he is again. Getting a fair bit of it this afternoon, Nathan Zunick. You'd say Remark players on the ball, they're, they're pretty much trying to do something with it. Barmer just trying to get it back. And the frustrating thing if you're a Barmer Monash supporter, they're doing the That's hard work. They're getting the footy and getting the clearance, but it's just after that, not going anywhere. The, the next kick, isn't it? Yeah. Ball spills out. This might be a chance for the Roos to maybe regather. and. That was Vader making ground to get back there and defend. It's a tough afternoon. That breeze is picking up this afternoon. I'll tell you what, if you had the... Uh, it's coming straight at us now. If you had the uh, catamaran this afternoon, Nobby, you'd be uh, getting a bit excited, I would have thought.
there's a bit of breeze out there. If you would, you'd be heading straight for Chambers Creek because that's the way it's going. <laughs> and probably driving back or walking back. You would have been a sailor back in the day, wouldn't you, Nobby? No, not really. <laughs> okay. no, it's Ricky Garrett with the footy for the year. Off Rovers goes. on the wing. Lakeside turns it back in board. Looks for a target. Johnson, no one able to mark it. Here's Gillard, Gillard again. Picks up the crumbs. Oh, oh airy. Oh. Had an airy that time. Couldn't get his... Couldn't quite get the kick away. Still a dangerous footy for the Roos here. Free kick. I'm not like a He's seen something here. That was in the back play. That will, kick will go to Justin Bonney at uh, halfback. Inside the 50, defensive 50. That was Herador for the yeah. Rovers there. That Bonney goes down the wing. Not quite over the line. There's Dragamala trying to get his hands back on it again. Gee, he nearly took a great mark then. Here we go. Barman Monash chipped the ball forward. There's Lehman. He's a long way from goal. A couple of Roos here on their own. Roos are on if they can get it over. Here's Drogamulla. Read that beautifully. Kicks it up. Looks for Smith. Nobby, yeah. your man, takes a mark in the pocket. He was uh, on on his own down there like an unregistered dog for about five minutes. Absolutely no one anywhere near him. Mind you, he's deep in the pocket, but it's on the, the correct side for the left footer in that pocket. Breeze is increasing. You might be hearing it through our effects mic yeah. this afternoon. Just a little kick up towards the uh, left-hand goalpost as we're looking at it, and the breeze will just clip it back in. Gives oh. himself a couple of metres, but that's a woeful kick. Really should have sent it that one. Well, he's lucky to kick that over a jam tin, Rocky. <laughs> that could be the worst kick of the season so far. <laughs> we can say that. Yeah. We're all friends. <laughs> reminiscent oh, reminiscent of a Greg Skadden kick. Bum, Hope you tuned in, Greg. Barmer Monash, get that one off the... Uh, get that one for the presentation no that's a ripper <laughs> a blooper <laughs> i'll write down the time for you if you want to get it <laughs> ball kick in from the Roo rovers still uh, the ruse try to get back in board five and football for mcdonald's Renmark. i know you're the junkyard dog's a favorite son of our broadcast lucky but i'm not sure if he'll let you get away with that ball up bonnie tried to move it forward but everyone that gets their hands on it's getting wrapped up that defensive pressure around the stoppages this afternoon Barn Ramon is having trouble running away from the stoppage with the ball, whereas Remark moving the ball much more efficiently. Now Jake Smith tries to get into the ruck. And this is a perfect example. Out comes the handball to halfback. Over it goes again to Dan Wolford. Takes a bounce at halfback and another bounce. Won't give it, won't kick it because Barn Ramon had players behind the ball. So attempting to handball it forward through Zunig. Ball out of bounds on the far side wing. Yeah. And that was Smith there for the Rovers that had his hands on it last. But we'll get a ball in. It's that, as I said, the second and third possessions. Yep. The Rovers are getting a much more cleaner disposal rate. The Roos are getting their hands on it, but turning it over too much with that second and third disposal. That's and, the big difference for me. And Barmer have slipped into damage control with a loose, behind, loose player behind the ball. And that loose player is Thomas. Um, Luke who's, Thomas. Yeah. Who's loose behind the ball? It is a good user of the ball, but uh, but you've got to get it first. Well, just short of 11 and a half minutes gone. Second quarter, Riverland football on 5 RM. 3-5-23, The Rovers to the Roos, one one seven. Thanks to McDonald's, Renmark. A couple of undisciplined tackles here by the the Roos are giving uh, Renmark some easier kicks across centre. This is Dan Wolford with the ball right on centre wing, on the edge of the square. The town side. Seeing a lot of the footy this afternoon on the town yep. side. The wobbly kick off the boot oh. that manages to find Jared Rowe. He'll use the ball. Don't you worry about that. Moves it on quickly. Looks for Gillard. Haynes over. Oh, the nice Johnson mark, Justin Bonney. Sails in over for the two-on-one. Out marks Gillard. Brings it out of defence. They've got to move it quicker, eh? Lucky. Well, Drogamola was had a, a good couple of metres and yep. was screaming for it, but was burnt. Yeah. It was a dangerous kick back in board. Sampson working further up the ground, gets the ball at half back, drives it long. Remark cover. Looks for Petrole was in there. We haven't seen yeah. much of him this afternoon yet. But, uh, once again, it's the Rovers on half back that managed to clear it out and finds Garrett, who just holds station for a second. Yeah. He's picking up some important touches across that centre line for Remark and using the football pretty well. Calm under pressure. Finds Beavis playing an unusual role up up ahead of centre. Feeds out the handball. Wolford to yep. other Wolford in <laughs> Tim. Dan to Tim. Ball yeah. shoots out towards uh, Nick Gillard. He's covering a lot of ground all inside the 50, Lockie, but from side to side. 
And that one spills over for a ball in just outside the attacking 50 of the Rovers. 13 minutes played, second quarter. Interesting thing about Nick Gillard is he's, he's probably 6'2". He plays a bit taller than that. Yeah, certainly quite the athlete. Yeah. And a wobbly old kick out of the ball in, and we're going to get a free here to the Rovers, so that was a bit of a wasted opportunity there for the Roos. And that'll be Remmark's uh, Matt Smith who will take that free kick when he gets back inside the field of play. Over there fishing around under a car at the moment to get the ball back. Yeah, you wouldn't say the Roos are out of this one just yet, though, but I uh, wouldn't want it too many more to slip through before half-time. I'm thinking, Lockie, if you go to half-time only kicking the one goal, you're in trouble. Oh, Ooh. kicks into the man on the mark was Smith. Yep. Back into it. Manages to get his hands back on it again, though. And umpire says holding the footy, no. No, the umpire let that go. I thought it was potentially a high tackle, but he may have ducked down into it. So he said, well, I'll have that, fellas. I'm not going to pay holding the ball. I'm not going to pay around the neck. I'm going to ball it up. So Blight's going to take the ruck for the Rovers. Manages to get a hand on it. Doesn't go too far. A couple of wobbly little stabs kicks our way. And we're going to get another ball in here. No, no he hasn't gone out yet. St stays in ball just. A little bit of friendly fire there for the Roos. But Jamison Whitbourne gets his hands on it. Gives it the pitching wedge kick. Looks up the ground. Boom. Trent Ogle tried to mark it, but he wasn't going to outmark. That was Wolford. Wolford. Tim. Bang, and he goes looking for and finding. That's blind. Right. Gets the handball out. Rimmer and play running through Jackson. Jackson's first goal of the day. And you don't have to give Liam Jackson too many opportunities like that when he can just drift past for the easy handball and slot it. That's four goals, three now to the Rovers, leading the Roos. one one seven five arm footy for McDonald's Renmark. You can grab 24 chicken McNuggets for nine ninety five at that's, Macca's T's and C's apply. That's a lot of nuggets, isn't it, Lockie? Oh, well. You'd need friends to help you through them, wouldn't you? <laughs> it all depends, Nobby. <laughs> I'm thinking at four goals to one goal, and take into account the five points, that's nine shots to two, I think Barmer in trouble. You're calling it. What are they going to have to do? He's just short. Well, still 15, still a few minutes in this second quarter. Only 15 played. So what do you do? Try and hang on and regroup or just roll the dice? I'm just looking through the options they've got. They've still got Chris Bonney in a bit of a ruck roll. I think he's probably wasted there. Sampson into the middle of the ground. I think I think what they're lacking is a little bit of leadership. And he's thought, I'm going in there. Oh, to... Umpire's called something. Something's... Free kick to Barmer and Monash here by the looks. I don't reckon there was the right... 6-6 six, six and 6 line up there. Oh, very good work there by, by Wolf, Matthew Wolford. Ran over to the ball, motioning to pick it up, and then when he really got fiddled, it was a bummer on his free kick. He, he got up and ran off. Okay, we're going to get... It's another... Oh, it's got to be the Ruckman. The Ruckman. Takes the free yep. kick. Rightio. Yep. Which is Chris Bonney. Chris Bonney takes it wide. It's full short of his teammate. See, that was a hanging on free kick. The, uh, called it. The Remark player burned off his opponent, which was Zunik off halfback. Interesting uh, lineup, isn't it? And he's having a ball out there. It's almost as if you, you almost wonder if the, the Roos this week in their planning meeting have sort of thought, all right, Zunik's going to be forward pocket and, yep. and uh, Haynes is going to be in the ruck and everything else. And then Josh Wade has just thrown out this uh, alternate lineup, <laughs> which is exciting. Yeah, it is, and, and it's all about attack too, Lockie. Yeah. It's, it's uh, nothing but attack. Just looking at uh, what the Rovers might be able to, or the Roos might be able to do. Just watch this one here. Ball back in now after a ball in. All tackled hard, and that's going to be a free to the Roos in the centre square. Yeah, good tackle too from uh, Wellington. Shovels out a handball, put his player under pressure. Who turns it straight over to a Remark player on centre wing far side. So what could have been a, an attack now turns into them having to defend. And that they have through Butter, Butterworth. He's picking up a lot of ball, but it's all behind centre. Ball back in. Falls over the back again. Sampson tried to read that one. Tried to go the play on advantage, but umpire says bring that one back. That's Druggermuller that's going to get the free there. Ball goes wide. Townside. Yeah, a little bit of an arm wrestle at the moment, isn't it, between both sides? Smith there for the ruse, brings it back in. Racking up the stats but not moving the ball forward. Another Fine. one across the ground. Finds Butterworth. Now it's found Whitbourne. Into the middle to Drugamulla. 
Takes a chest mark, has to dive for it, barely the 15 metres. This possession football is what we saw a lot of the Roos last year. Drives it up to centre half forward, but Turns goes it nowhere. Over to Harry Beavis at centre half back. First thing he looks for is a handball. Can't find anyone. Plenty of Barmer Monash players behind the ball. Oh, Jacko thought he oh, better not stretch out for that one. There's someone coming the other way. There's Chris Bonney for the Roos. Tried to get his hands on it. Ball back up to half forward for the Roos. Wolford now for the Rovers. He picked it up, but wrapped up yeah. straight away, and we'll get a ball up. Yeah, experienced football there from Tim Wolford. Knew he couldn't get it cleared to anyone, so I thought, I'll hang on to it till someone pin, pins it to me. Blight, big tap over the back. Good read there from Sam Butterworth. He fumbles it, though. Can't quite get his hands on it. Rowe right. managed to get it. Handball's back into Jackson. The Rovers are on the attack. Handball over to Dan Wolford. Put it out in front. Can someone get this one? No, they can't. Gee, that was uh, a clumsy tackle. All that, that was Jack Albrecht putting his head over the footy and earning the ball. There's a Dan Wolford there having a bit of a uh, discussion today with a couple of uh, players there from the, the Roos. Off hands, Fraser Sampson drives the ball forward. Ooh. Oh, slipped through the hands again. That needed to be marked. And Was that Dane Austin there, Lockie, that didn't quite re reel that one in? The uh, 26? Six, yeah. yeah, 26, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Trying to see, oh, it's Druggermuller now puts it up towards the goals. Can the Roos make something out of this? They've got, the numbers. They've got numbers oh, there. Hambles on Wesley, oh. frustratingly close, but that's a behind. Well, a lot of work for, for not much reward, Lockie. One, two, eight, playing Remark, four, five, 29, a 21 point lead to the Rovers here at the almost a 20 minute mark of the third of the second quarter. From that Donald's Remark Riverland football. That was frustrating for Druggamulla there. They got the perfect approach into that forward 50 for a goal. But his Gillard outside the 50 up at centre wing over to Rose. He's had been fairly influential. Back to Gillard. Uses that left leg straight into the hands of Alex Haynes. Alex what? Haynes. Gee, they're teaming well together, those two forwards, aren't they? You're leading them. I haven't got the official stats, but I'm going to call it. I think Haynes is leading the marks this afternoon. Yep. He's Attacking marks here. He least. has taken a handful of key marks in the forward 50 metre arc. So on Hain it or in it? Haynes for goal number two. Kicking from a fair angle, but I'm going to back him in for this one. Well, difficult shot from this angle. 25 but, uh, out. Oh, and it just fades it. short. Yep. Unfortunate. I forgot to short side. I forgot to commentate and tell him the far side post <laughs> there, Alex. You went for the middle. That didn't work. Another behind for the Rovers. They extend the lead now. 21 plays eight. Mind you, that breeze has changed since his last kick, and it's coming straight across the ground now towards us. A bit of a shift in breeze this afternoon. I did see on the forecast it was supposed to be light this afternoon, so maybe it could drop up even further. Look, yeah. it's a great game of footy. Well contested. Remark having the better of the contests. Butterworth takes the kick out for the ruse, but it's taken over the line. A couple of hands on it, though. Fortunately for the captain of the Barmer Monash side. Ro rotation here with uh, Jake Smith coming from the ground. And is that uh, Campbell Marks going back on? It might be Dane Austin, the number 16. Dane Austin, 16 it is, yes. Hey. Uh, Ball still in the attacking 50 for the Rovers. Can they make something out of this? Fraser Sampson tries to get a handball away. Oh, back into the centre. This is where the Rovers look dangerous. Rose back in there as well. Kick over to Matt Walford. And Gillard unable to mark it, but he's going to get the free here too high. And uh, put this one in the book already. Look, <laughs> two experienced football acts there. Firstly... Um, Matt Wolford lifting his eyes, taking the time to just steer that ball towards Gillard, and Gillard realising he's under pressure, bracing for the contact and making sure the umpire saw it. The visiting Renmark Rovers with a 22-point lead, just short of half-time, is to extend it even further. Gillard kicking from 15 metres out on a slight angle. Ball's on its way. Looks good off the boot. Geez, a great kick at goal, isn't he? And that's his second of the day. Great kick, full top, full uh, fourth for yeah. the quarter for the Renmark Rovers this afternoon. Yeah, and uh, he is proving it. He's going to prove it. He's proving a handful for Barmer Monash today, and he is going to be a handful for any uh, Riverland side coming up against the Rovers. Oh, seeing Trevor Thorpe coming to the boundary line. Yeah, I blood rule. That, that is might lucky. Have been a blood rule. Yeah, so. it is. 
on comes Dan Wolford in his place. Yeah, so just looking at the, the ruse, I mean, we'll, we'll have a chat about it after less than a minute time, to, Less than a minute to play, Lockie. Just going to hold station here till, till half time. The recurrent premiers looking for some solutions here to some problems. Don't think they're enjoying being the hunted. No. Umpire's called something again? No. Just seeing what's going on here. Okay. He's just getting the 666 sorted out, I think, Lockie. A couple of players trying to stretch the boundaries of the 666 rule this afternoon. Here's five round football for McDonald's Renmark. Oh, great tap from Gartry. But it's the ruse that managed to read it. Ball goes forward, taking the ground, and we'll get a, another ball up. Still inside the square. Yep, look, it'll have to be a very quick movement of the footy here with about half a minute left. I'm thinking that, uh, I was thinking Barmer were the only, oh, there was a late tackle. Tim Wolf would put to the ground well after he got rid of the ball. And a little bit of a, little bit of a barn dance going on there, and, and the free kick reversed. So maybe uh, someone in the Remark side saying, well... Bonnie takes it wide. And that's yeah. Butterworth. He's going to have to get his skates on. Kicks it into the attacking 50. Ruse need a mark. Spills over the back. Taken to ground. Tackled. Is that going to say holding the ball oh, too high? high? Tackle. That'll end the quarter, yeah. Lucky. So the Ruse unable to have oh, an opportunity for goal. And that will be very frustrating. Half time here at the Lakeside. It's the visiting at Renmark Rovers. 6 6 36 to the Barmer Monash Ruse. 1 2 8. The Rovers looking the real deal. The Roos looking for some solutions after half time. Still a great game of footy and a big second half to come. Yeah, it certainly is, Lockie. And uh, um, look, realistically, you could be uh, a little bit negative and say game over at half time when you've only kicked one goal, two to half time, and you're trailing by the best part of five goals. But you can't count. Uh, Count the ro count the ruse out, but Certainly mind you, can't. mind you, the Rovers won't have to do too much to ice the game. We must throw back to the sideline view studio and find out what's going on around the grounds with Trevor Scott this afternoon here at Five RM. Trevor.
Interesting score updates there from half time. And Nobby Norton, you're alongside me this afternoon here at the Lakeside. And, yep. uh, interesting game. Yeah, Lockie, interesting game. An interesting game in the fact that Barma will have to make some changes if they're going to come out here with a chance of winning this game. Starting off uh, 28 points down at half time. I suppose you've got to forget about that. Firstly, try and get back. But I'd be thinking, Lockie, that um, they haven't had much up forward. Reese Lehman's given them a little bit. But I think they need... I'm thinking maybe one of the uh, maybe Jack Austin into ruck, maybe uh, Chris Bonnie Ford playing a similar role that we're seeing uh, Alex Haynes play in the Remark side. You know that long moving big man out to half mm. forward, out to the 50 to get a bit of ball. But the other thing that will need to happen from Remark is they will need to lock down on Nick Gillard. We've seen how dangerous he has been in this first half. Certainly is. Look, defenders-wise, from the ruse, what are you thinking there, Mitch Wellington? You're going to you're gonna maybe uh, undo yourself an avenue to go, but he's a big body. Oh, look, I think they need, I think they need more... Mo I'm not saying Mitch is not mobile. Maybe Mitch is the one you push forward out of ruck and use him as a key forward. Because I don't... Uh, you know, you're up against the, what, state country ruckman. You're not yep. going to win it. So <laughs> just cut your losses and try and focus on what you can win around the ground. I, I think what we're going for here. I think more importantly for um, for Fraser Sampson is to find someone who can run with and lock down Nick Gillard. Yeah. Because yeah, he's creating the opportunities for other players as well. I'll tell you what, just rip, ripping through the uh, goal score as well, we have time here before the, s the second half starts. Uh, for Barma Monash, it's simple. It's the one goal. It's the first goal of the match for to Mitch Wellington. He's the goal scorer for Barma Monash. For Remark, the, the goal scorers are Alex Haynes, who kicked one in the first quarter, and the quarter just gone, the second quarter, Liam Jackson with a goal, Josh Fader with a goal, and Nick Gillard with two goals. Um, so they've been a handful. Better players for both sides. Easy for Remark to find them. They're all sort of chipping in and doing their bit. But I thought Josh Fader, another good quarter. Matt Wolford's been good. Gillard for his goals and his, and his moving around. Zunick's been excellent off half-back, Lockie. Um, Harrison Brown early, Dan Wolford's had a bit, Gardery and Ruck's been strong, and as I said, Alex Haynes has provided plenty up forward for him. For Barman Monash, a little bit harder to find him. I thought a couple of the young fellas have played pretty well. Matt Watke, Dan Wesley, another good quarter. Sam Butterworth's been very good, their captain, but done just about everything behind half back. I think he had one kick in front of centre, which is right at the end of that quarter. Jack Albrecht's been good. Chris Bonney's done his little bit around the ground and, and the coach, Fraser Sampson, has been in the middle trying to create something. But this will be what's happened at half time and how they've reset, Lockie. Be interesting to see third quarter action, 5 and football. Yep. Riverland Football League Premiership season, thanks to McDonald's Renmark and 24 Chicken McNuggets for 9 95 at Macca's. T's and C's applied, website for details. Reese Lehman coming to the bench to start this quarter. So, yeah, so an interesting uh, line-up here. For, uh, for Barma Monash in their forward line. And looks like Austin's at, uh, he's the key forward, is he? So they've got Chris Bonney in the ruck. Yeah, number Austin's, 17 for the Ruse. And Austin's lined up in the goal square going forward for them. Or is it Mitch Wellington? Mitch Wellington it is. Butterworth in the middle too for yeah. the Ruse. Just looking so, to see what's happening down in defence. So changes have been made at the uh, at the lakeside. But I think the, the problem they got, they're not getting through half forward. Whereas Remark... With Haynes coming right up the half board, have got an avenue through there. And there it is, third quarter underway here at the lakeside. Fiverr and football for McDonald's Renmark. Ball up, Gartry gets a small tap away, but it's the junkyard dog, Jake Smith, that tries to machine it out of there, but he got stuck in the machine. And it looks like uh, for Barmer Monash, Dane Austin lining up on Gillard for this quarter. We're seeing what else is happening around the grounds here. Got. Uh, Got the 10.50s on him, have you, Lockie? Just looking at the binoculars here. Another ball up. Hasn't gone too far. Good tackle from Rowe. And we'll go again. Yeah, that, that uh, midfield line-up for, uh, for Remark is has been varied all the time, but they've got plenty of players that can play, and there's Zunig in there too at the moment. So another soccer forward. With uh, Wolford in there. Another ball up. He's the third ball up of the day, Nobby. Is this the play yeah. on call? Yeah, I think Zunig is actually in there. He's come off his wing and he's got Trent Ogle as an opponent. Wow! Oh, Gartry. Oxygen. He high. needed oxygen. For a ruck contest, it's a bit of a unique method, but still. Ball coming forward. Drag a muller onto it. Can he hurt him? Ruse with the first inside 50 of the quarter. No one able to mark it. Ball spills over Here the back. Go. Can Wucky sucker this he one? He can. Too. He can. 
There's the answer. First goal of the third quarter to Matthew Wakey and to Barmra Monash. And I'll tell you what, if they're going to get themselves back into this game, that's how they've got to do it. The big fella, Wellington, providing the contest in the air. Firstly, the ball going in long from uh, Ben Druggemuller to, to, uh, to Mitch Wellington, who brought the ball to ground, and Wakey was on it like a seagull on a chip. He was hot on it. Look, I tell you what, he, he actually out, outplayed three Rover players there too. So, yep. I mean, some would say fortuitous, but the scoreboard doesn't lie. That's a fair income goal. I reckon he's one of their better players too, uh, Barmer Monish. Um, Matt Wakey, he's had a great, great game and uh, hasn't stopped trying. He's lining up there on Trevor Thorpe for the... Ro Here we Roman go, Rovers Junkyard Arthur. Dog out of the middle this time. Another centre break to Barmer Monish. And who's it going to? Wakey again, oh. he takes the mark. Certainly what, best on ground in the first two minutes of the third quarter. <laughs> Holds off the, he held off the veteran Trevor Thorpe. The ball was falling short, but he gave Thorpe no chance of even getting near that. Takes a nice chest mark. He will kick from about 45 out. Yeah, all of that. Kicking he's, from... He'll be, oh, outside the 50, he gets on with it quick and looks for and finds... Oh! oh unable to mark it. He found Fraser Douglas there, who coughed up a very simple mark. Manages to get a second bite at it, though. Back to Campbell Marks. Bombs it to the centre of the 50. Can some Wellingtons underneath it? Spills forward. Smith was there. Watke's there. But it's the Rovers that clear it out. Nobby once again. Yeah, Wolford to Wolford. Back to Thorpe. He's on the run. Over to Ricky Garrett. He threw it. Penal the veteran penalised for throwing that. Incorrect disposal. Free kick will come to Butterworth from Barmer Monash, who will drive Barmer into attack. Tell you what, the first three minutes of this third quarter is certainly some exciting footy. Drives it wide, fires the coach, Fraser Sampson. Not a noted goal kicker, but a good user of the football. Oh, Chips it over and finds Wellington. On his own, unchecked. Yeah, he's on a, what, about a 30-degree oh, angle? It's, it's tight. Kicking from the town side pocket. On his right foot. With a breeze blowing the, the ball from right to left. We'll call it the palm tree pocket here at the lakeside. Ball's on its way and... Stays right. Stays that far right that it's out of bounds on the full. Unlucky for the ruse there. That would have been a good one. That's an opportunity. A couple of opportunities missed. I thought the, the uh, Fraser Douglas, uh, he was free of his man by a couple of metres and could not mark that. Well, he'd have been better off chest marking it, Lockie, instead of in the hands job. So kick out from the Rovers. I mean, in the hands looks good, but only when you take them. That was Morgan Edwards, I think, with the kick out there. Chips it across to Dan Wolford. Oh, dangerous kick back yeah. in board. He's under the pump here. Oh, gets a high tackle. Undisciplined tackling there. You've got to look at his belly button, Dan Wolford. Oh. Wellington getting him high, albeit probably about, a, about 20 centimetres difference in height. Tree Brody Rover in the pocket. I think it was uh, he took the kick out before. Sorry, not Morgan Edwards. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, Harrison Brown on the back flank. Done Just hold station for a second. Yeah, Remark trying to regroup a bit here because Barmer have come out firing. Very dependable, Harrison Brown, isn't yeah. he? He's a I'm saying commentator's curse. Well, <laughs> don't straight over to Bruce. <laughs> I don't think that was necessarily his fault. <laughs> kick wasn't too bad. He just didn't get a contest out of his teammate. Nice kick in. Wucky again. Dangerous. Holds it in and we'll get another ball up. Just another mark should have almost been taken, I reckon, there. Half forward for the ruse. Five room football. Thanks to McDonald's Renmark. No one. Umpire says. Umpire's given. Barmer got the free here out Chris, of this ruck contest. Chris Bonney to, to receive the free kick. So those small changes at half time, though, we have so far. Yeah, Wellington forward has been, has been the move, hasn't it? we got Thomas screaming for it on the wing, but Bonnie goes to the middle of the 50 oh, arc. Kicks oh. to his opposing ruckman, Garter. He takes an easy, uncontested mark. Just sailed in there beautifully, didn't he? He had to go to Wellington, who was leading out wide. Hambles around the back to Brown. Gets to it to Blight. Blight to Zunick. Now it's Gillard on the half-back flank. Not the greatest right foot kick in the world, gets but, it. but does the job. Intercept from the Rovers. The uh, Ruse, rather. Right, great stuff from Sampson and Butterworth. And You'd uh, say that's a win to Barmer to hold that ball up. Adrian Herador was about to head goalwards but was held up with the ball. So we'll get a ball up. Broadcast wing here at the lakeside this afternoon. Bonnie took the ruck unopposed. Didn't seem to matter though because the Rovers get their hands on it anyway. Driving kick forward from Wolford. 
And now the Rovers go on attack. There is no one in the attacking 50. Gillard's chasing it to the boundary line, but... That'll be a free kick to Barma Monash, last disposal. You know, interesting, in that last ball up here on the wing in front of us, Lockie, two Barma players, boundary side, which left the middle of the oval open to the Remart players. And we saw that quick getaway yeah. there. The Roos really got out of jail there because that could have quite easily been goal number six. For I the think Renmark they need Rovers. a bit of stoppage work during the week to, for both of them to be boundary side and leave their Remark opponents in the middle of the ground. Oh, great intercept mark there from the Rovers. He's that, going that, the wrong way, he was. That was Morgan Edwards there. Yep. Kicks it to the top of the square. Which confused the bloke on the mark and gave him two metres when he worked out the correct way to go. This kick coming wide to Barmer Monash. Coming out here to Fraser Douglas. On the half-back flank. Notice how he took that one on his chest, Lockie? Yeah. <laughs> Wheels it back in. Bit of a pitching wedge kick. Looking for someone to mark it. Wellington was in there, but he couldn't Through get it. Through goes Zunik. Takes the ball off hands and drives it forward straight down the middle. Looking for Haynes, and he's clunked it. Mark number six in my book, Lockie. Alex. Inside the forward 50. He has given them something. Don't pass it off, Alex. Take your time. I reckon he's got this one in him too. He'll be kicking from all of 45 yeah, out. Look at that flag coming off the uh, the pole over near the, the uh, town. And you'd say left-hand goalpost or townside goalpost. Slight is, angle. Yeah, is where he's got to be aiming. And it'll finish just inside it. Should he kick it exactly where I've programmed it? So, Alex Haynes from the right oh. gives it a roost but it's a wobbly old kick doesn't quite make the distance I think he's going to have to get get his caddy to put the divot back in the ground there Lockie it looked like he kicked the ground first Wolford got his hands on it and that was Tim nice but work there from Barmer Monash through Spilius he's done a little bit too he's been around kick going out wide that's Petrole there the 25 yep he needs to get more involved in the game too certainly quite the, the find in the final series last he year was, yeah He's got a few mates, though, and if they all wick it up by 10 15%, they're right back in this. They need the next goal. I don't think the term premiership hangover is quite no. relevant just yet, Nobby, but maybe just you know, premiership complacency. At 5 might 6, be. at Remark 5 6 36, Barmer Monash trailing 2 2 14. They need the next goal, and the one after that, too, really. It is 5 Spilius back in. Spilius back in over the ball and earns the free kick. He put his hand in there where no one wanted the. Now off he goes, plays on. This is better from Barmer Monash. Spilius drives it forward. Looks for Wellington. He couldn't quite mark it. But look at that attack on the ball. Matt Wolford there, taking see the, the ground. See the role he's playing is not unlike that role Alex Haynes is playing for Remark. And that's what they needed. Someone across half forward, mobile and tall. Seeing a few more Roos taking the game on a little bit yep. now, which is what they'll need. Just shy or just over nine minutes played, third quarter. Well, you've got to, Lockie. It's a bit like one-day cricket. You can't play for a draw. It's not <laughs> test cricket. <laughs> Too true. Ball up. Blight doing the ruck work now. The other thing Tackle I've noticed is, level, um, we'll ball is Butterworth working much closer to his team's goals, you know, up, up closer in the forward line, which means his possessions are going to hurt more. Sampson into the back play, where he normally does some of his better work. There's Whitbourne. He got it out to Spilios. Get it on the boot, son. Back to Whitbourne. Wesley's underneath it. Can he read it? Gillard for the Rovers got his hands on it. It's a bit of a volleyball game at the moment. Wellington again gets the ball out. Three runs line. Looks for a player. Didn't quite get to him. But they got numbers here. Patrol A. We oh, asked him to lift. He's head. gone on the barrel. He, no sooner <laughs> had he kicked that than he, his hands went to his head. He knew he miscued. Look, they're getting opportunities. they just got to make the most of it, Barmer. Dragamuller now. He couldn't quite yeah, push up. It. Pushed up onto Wolford. He's who's kicked it out in the fall. So the Roos will have another crack here. They're getting enough opportunity this quarter, Nobby. Yeah, they are. Some their own doing. Some fortuitously from a couple of Rover mistakes. Here we go. Randy's player goes. The Baronis player looks up, lifts his eyes. That was Vanderwood. Yeah, it was. Looks for Bonnie. He's got his hand. Oh, walks into the, a wall. The old, um, the old don't argue. Umpire thought he might have got done for incorrect disposal there, but it was play on. Look, he'd taken one step. The ball was on his chest. He's trying to break free to get rid of it. Does the ruck. That's actually a tap. Smith with the clearance. The bombs it to the dog. pocket. Can Quick. Douglas chase this one in? Oh, he got his hands on it just. That but keeps the ball in the area. Get a ball in. Full pocket for the ruse. I need something here, Nobby. Yeah, look, they've got the wall built across... Uh, 
across their 50 metre line, but they've got to man them up. And here comes uh, Jameson Whitbourne to man up on, on Rowe. And you have to be right with him because Rowe's a very clever footballer. Wellington getting the hit out. Good tap from Mitch Wellington yeah, there. That went straight to uh, to Wacky, but and he copped maybe a one a little high, but the umpire was unsighted. Saying that, Breeze is picking up a bit more, Nobby. Which way is it going? I'm just looking. It's going almost directly straight across. Dragomala again. Bad luck. Oh. Kicks, dumps that out to Beavis. Well, here we go. 25 metres. Yep. Out the way, Lehman. Reese going to give away another one, mate. It wasn't quick enough to quite get off the mark, bring it back a little bit. Umpire Matt Grummet said 25. Yep. And gave him about 15, I reckon. <laughs> He's a former defender, Grum. He won't give him too much. There's Smith now for the Rovers. Kicks it long down the line. Haynes again making the contest there up, up at centre wing. Dan Wolford. He's been a bit quiet so far this quarter. Yeah, manned up. I think some of the manning up after half time. Uh, Sampson's asked more of his players to lock down on Wolford and, and lock down on Gillard. And they're, 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 so far they're doing it. Yeah, 36 plays, 14 on the scoreboard. It is 5RM Riverland Football for McDonald's Renmark. Vanderwood spills that boy at the Spilius. Takes a nice mark on centre wing. Has Ogle moving short for him, but Ogle went too soon, I think. Looking for a bigger option. Oh, no. Turns it over to Dan Wolford in the middle of the ground. Poor kick. Got some He's around his man and then driving it long forward to Gillard. who take. Ooh, I reckon he might have been looking into the sun there. But Gillard comes back on the loose ball and no problems. Oh, he missed it. Kicked from the, it, was a, it was a pretty hurried kick from the pocket. So. He had more time than that, Lockie, but uh, was looking for another another addition to his highlight reel, I think. So that's a minor score. Takes Remark to 5-7-37, leading Barman Monash 2-2-14. On the McDonald's Remark Riverland football scoreboard, grab 24 chicken nuggets for nine ninety five at Maccas. T's and C's apply. See the website for details. So Ruse now with the kick in. Wellington back on, ready to come back on. Just watching what's going on. Didn't have on. much of a breather. I hey, just saw that. I reckon Patrol I just went on for about two seconds and then realised he wasn't meant to be on and came back yeah. off. <laughs> that was the quickest rotation I've seen. I reckon uh, the coach, Fraser Sampson, is down behind, down in front of us off ground, realising that their options going forward, Wellington's the key to it, keeping him as a target. And he's found himself with a mismatch. He's on Mitch Jenke. He'd have, he'd have 10 or 15 centimetres on Mitch, wouldn't he? Or 10 at least. You'd have to think so. they just got to get it to him. So if they can get this ball forward, put a bit of height on it, or Garrett doing the hard stuff in there, giving, giving Brown an easy disposal away from the ball, but could not find a teammate. Back to Barmer Monash at half back. There's Austin. Oh, almost a turnover. Through goes. Oh, a ta tackle. They call that tunnelling, don't That's they? That's a dangerous tackle yeah. on Chris Bonney. It was a, uh, what do they call it? Tunnelling. Yep. You, 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 it's a bit of a hard bomb because he, he jumped. He, he didn't jump, but he was running at the same time. And as he was tackled. I reckon it was a WWF move. <laughs> yeah. Got the free anyway. Ball coming bit... across the ground to Jack Austin. A little bit going on behind the play, too, just yep. quietly. Out wide here to Spillers, having a great quarter. Can't quite get a handle on that. Has it now. Takes the game on. Rowe tackled him over the boundary line. This oh, could be a he's, free here. He's played holding the ball. Okay. Right I would have thought the other way myself. I would have thought it was over. Oh, and then he's given umpire Kosolke a little bit of advice that he didn't need, Spillers. Yeah. Which is going to cost him 25 metres. See, I always thought that, too. If you, do it, if you wrap someone up over the boundary line and complete the tackle... It's generally a free kick the other way. I, look, I, I agree, Lockie, and I think Spilius was right, but I tell you what, umpires never change their mind no matter how much advice you give them. He's managed to get his hands back on it again here, though, so... All you get is an extra extra little bit from them. The Roos haven't lost out too much. Kick down the Ogle line. Ogle going Ogle. for that. And tackle, taken to ground once again. That's holding the ball. Some of you get a bit more feeling in this game. We've been waiting for it. That's holding the ball against Austin Tooth. Uh, what's going to go on to here? Tim Wolford. Well, they got three on the mark. That's handy. Uh, Tim Wolford with the footy. No, wrong player getting the free kick. He's come back to Nathan Zunick. He's had to come back and take the free kick. He was the tackler. So Zunick on half forward for the Rovers. Lovely kick into the 50. Can someone get underneath this one? No. Almost picked up off the ground. 
on the way through. On his oh. left foot, Gillard looking for another bit on the highlight reel, and he's kicked that one out of bounds without anyone else touching it. So that'll be a free kick to Barmer. They have players here. If they can move it on. Butterworth has got to get this one underway quickly. Hamble's over the top. Barmer play it. Under Nowhere a bit to... of pressure. Drugamulla now. Can he get a kick away? He can. That's better. Up the middle of the ground to Trent Ogle. That halfback looks wide. Switches the ball across to our side to Spiller, so he's having a great quarter, but nowhere for him to go. Remart plays behind the ball. Holds it back in board. There's Austin now with the footy. They're having to chip their way forward because of the player behind them. That's Watke in the middle. Watke. He goes wide to Vanderwood. Looks for a play. Takes a nice mark and moves on. He's got Lehman deep if he can get it there. Reese Lehman he loves these sort of things. Couple of bites at it. He manages it. to get the bounce. Can he kick this one? Goes to the pocket to make it wider. Oh if my. you don't mind, Reese Lehman, that's the goal of the day. <laughs> Shrugged <laughs> off the tackle three times. Probably should have taken the mark. Didn't after three grabs at it. Played on. Shrugged off two Remark Rover tackles and actually made it. Worse and worse degree of difficulty, only to make it look like he could do it even better. I tell you what, I mean, some of the things he's done over the last couple of seasons, and I'll be you shake your head, but some things you see like that, you go, that's why he's in the side. Can he make the easy look so difficult yeah. and produce it? <laughs> As you said, uh, well done. It that, was a... that could have been a straight up mark, go yeah. back, set shot, easy goal, but no, yeah. shake the tackle three times, check but, side around the body. But credit for the second and third efforts from the big fella. And a goal on the board now takes their... They're only trailing by 17, 16 points now. 5, 6, 36 to 3, 2, 20. So they're back in the game, Rimmer, uh, Barmer. Well, the Rovers are yet to score a major this quarter. Well, don't talk too soon. Harrison Brown drives that forward. Barmer on it. Ball coming out. Is Declan Ooh, Johnson taken high. high? That'll be a free. That looked high from here, Lockie. It was an undisciplined tackle. He'd be well within range here, Decky any, Johnson from the Rovers. Any time you're sticking your arm out at shoulder height, you run the risk of taking your opponent high. You've got to be looking at their belly button and getting down. Riverland football on 5 Aaron from McDonald's, Redmark. Redmark. 36 plays yeah, 20. Yep, yeah, 16 points. Could be 22 if he steers this one straight through the middle, Declan Johnson. Yeah, on umpire the does not move. And there it is. The Rovers return serve. They're first for the quarter. 22-point margin now for the Remark Rovers. 6-6. Six, six. So we're... 42 plays. Barmer Monash, 3-2-20. Just shy of 20 minutes played, third quarter. The Roos are a chance after three-quarter time, Nobby. How close are they going to have to be? Well, they've got to win the quarter first, and they haven't quite done that yet. They're in front at the moment, but they've got to win the quarter. That's the first thing you've got to do when you're trying to shoot down a margin, a 28-point halftime margin. I think if you're, within, if you're within three kicks of hitting the front at three-quarter time, I think as a player, you know you're a chance. Here we go. Dragomala again, who's had a great quarter, given him plenty. Vader mopping up at half-back, misses it. Oh. Through goes Trent Ogle. He's got a bit of pace, this young fella. Gets the ball out. Oh, that was a front-on tackle, um. Oh, didn't seem to worry about it. Patrol, they tried to get the crumbs there, but it spilled out to the Rovers. Yeah. Notice Wolford, uh, Tim, Tim Wolford. Wolford and Vader working the back lines. Nice mark by Fraser Sampson. Looking for a 25 as he was touched after. He was accosted after he marked it, I suppose, is the best way of putting that. Just hold station before he goes on the attack for the ruse. Goes up to the flank, takes the ball wider, no one able to mark it. Umpire's seen a push. Geez, a fair way away. And the Rovers will get a free here. That's costly yeah. for the Barmer Monash Roos. Gee, some of the young Barmer Monash players have certainly shown a bit of ticker this quarter. Young Vanderwood, one of them. Sporting a little bit of a uh, extra bit of guard on his face. Might have had a bit of nose, nose work done at half time. Big kick up. Samson in under the ball, but unable to get it clear. He's back on it now on the ground, doing his best. Handball out to Drugamal. He's had a great quarter. Drives it forward again, but to two Remote players who spoil each other. The fist out coming to Patrol back to Vanderwood. Yep, on his left foot around the corner. Wild kick a goal. Oh. Oh, that was nearly the wrong one for a goal then. Yeah, rush through for a behind. Takes Barmer to 3-3-21. Trailing, trailing Remark 6-6-42. 
21 point margin after being 28 points at half time. The we Wesley nearly got his hands on that. If he yep. just could have got there, that could have been an easy goal. Harrison Brown deep in defence for uh, Bar uh, for Remart takes the takes the uh, mark from the kick in. He's had a serviceable game too, Lockie. Certainly dependable down the line. Looks for Blight. Punch forward though by Austin. And yeah. The number 16 of Dane Austin there got his hands on it, but it's over the boundary line. We'll get a ball in right in front of us here at Fiverr and Football this afternoon. Thanks to McDonald's Renmark. 24 chicken men nuggets for 9.95 at Macca's T's and C's apply. See the website for details. Interesting uh, couple there, Jake Smith and uh, Ricky Garrett. Just watching what's going on here, and we don't go too far, do we? It's almost the main bout, isn't it, yeah, those two? One who's on the undercard. Just about. Just watching what's going on in the back there. Nothing. And we'll Declan Johnson with the footy. But yep. another ball up. What are we, 22 minutes played. Third quarter, Riverland football on 5RM. Garrett gets tries to get the ball out. Goes to Austin. Sends it high. Barmer in front here. Oh, almost to his brother. Almost. Dane Austin was going yeah, full Jack, tilt to the boundary yeah, then. Jack to uh, to Dane. Not, a, not an intention, but... To, but uh, Dane made the effort to make sure that free kick didn't go to Remart for a last disposal. Sometimes that's uh, worth a kick to you too, yeah, 42, just that effort. 42 plays, 21 on the scoreboard, nearly 23 minutes gone. Third quarter, Riverland football on 5RM, ball in. Ricky Garrett for the Rovers gets his hands on it, but taken to the boundary, and we'll go again. I'm going to say it, Lockie. I think Ben Druggemuller has, uh, him and uh, Matthew Watke have willed the Roos back into this game almost off their own boot. Yeah, we're seeing a bit more of some of the other young yeah. Roos too. And Vanderwood too. too. He's had a great quarter. Yeah. And I'd almost throw Petrole in there yeah. too for a few bits and pieces. Yeah. For a couple of guys that hardly saw it in the first half, they've fired up. Uh, the Roos now hungry for the footy and the <coughs> ball up, but they're not going to go any further because that's three-quarter time. It's the Renmark Rovers, 6-6-42. Barmer Monash, 3-3-21. Narrowed the margin by seven points. Uh, Another quarter like that won't be enough. They need more. It's said to be a big final quarter here at the Lakeside. We'll throw back to Trevor Scott in the sideline view studio and find out what's happening around the place. Trevor, back to you.
that quarter they won. Two goals kicked to, to Barmer Monash to the only one goal from Remark Rovers, and that was as a result of a clumsy tackle that gave Declan Johnson a free kick, which he scored from. Goal kickers for Remark. Two goals to Nick Gillard. One goal to Josh Fader, one to Liam Jackson, one to Declan Johnson and one to Alex Haynes. Goal kickers for Barmer Monash, all singles. Uh, in that quarter, one to Matthew Watke, one to Reese Lehman, which is a cracker goal. And the first goal of the game to Mitch Wellington. Some better players for both sides. Lockie running through the list. Uh, Josh Fader, in no particular order, Josh Fader for Remark, Matthew Wolford, Remark, Nick Gillard, quite that quarter and well held. Uh, Nathan Zunick went on with it. Gave him plenty. Harrison Brown was once again steady in that quarter. The Wolford boys, Tim and Dan, good. And uh, Alex Haynes keeps doing his bit. For Barmer Monash, none better than probably Ben Druggemuller in that quarter and followed closely by Matthew Wucky who tacked the ball on ground. Samuel Wolford had his moments. Butterworth a much better quarter from the skipper further up the ground. Other, and, of course, uh, Coach Fraser Sampson played pretty well too, so... The question is, Lockie, at 21 points down, only kicking three goals for the game, can they kick four to win it while holding Remark scoreless? Yeah, that is the big one. Look, you've got to go full attack. Um, Barmer Monash, although we have seen some glimpses of an attacking style of play this game, it's, it's a hard one to see them holding Renmark to nothing this quarter. But, Nobby, we have been shocked a few times at Riverland Football, and maybe today know. could be that day. Uh, fourth quarter about to get underway here at Barmer this afternoon. Doing it all thanks to the Riverland Motor Group and the Kia Sorento, Kia's most awarded SUV yet. Umpire Matt Grummet with the football in the middle here at the lakeside. A sunny afternoon. Temperature just starting to drop a little bit now. I tell you what, that autumn sun is absolutely gorgeous here at Barmer this afternoon. Game now underway. It's a good clearance for the Rovers. They go inboard through Harrison Brown into their attacking 50. Handball forward. Ricky Garrett wastes no time. Shot on goal. A wobbly old kick. Fraser Sampson takes the mark in the defensive goal square and relieves the pressure, Lockie. Yeah, brings it out. Looks oh. for Rowe. Vanishes to find Butterworth, the captain for the Ruse. Look, great effort from the skipper up against uh, Rowe and Brown. Two on one, and he nearly pulled the mark in, but at least he held the ball up. Going to need a big quarter from Butterworth, this one, if the Ruse are to get up. Doesn't go too far, and we'll have another stoppage. Over in football this afternoon, live from Barmer, the Lakeside Oval. Big crowd here today. It's been great to see. Gartery and Bonnie doing the ruck work there, but Bonnie gave away a free kick. Gartery touched the free. Kicks into the attacking 50. Looks for a target. Can someone get underneath it? Well, they can, but it was Palmer Monaco. Here we but go, a Rowe. Of gambles. Jared Rowe from the Rovers. He doesn't miss. And that's his first goal for the day. And the... Oh, just touch Lockie off the boot. Right. Went, it went through the big sticks. You had that right, but it was touched off boot. Really right. Jared Rowe was celebrating. I was yeah. too. Barmer Monash <laughs> straight out with the ball through Butterworth. Oh, misses Bonnie. It's the right idea. See, Barmer Monash had come out with the idea of going straight down the middle, Lockie. Oh, courageous mark there from, from the Barmer Monash player, Justin Bonnie, running with the flight of the ball. See what's going to happen here. Brings it wide, looking for Austin. Punch Dane. forward. Nice pick up. It was Brody Rover there from yeah. the Rovers. Now it's Patrol A. He was, couldn't get his hands on it. That was Samuel Vanderwood. He's, he's shown a bit, lucky, I think, for a young fella. He's having a dip today. Yeah. Row in there from the Rovers. Not a bad kick. I think Jared Rowe's seen enough of that over the years. He doesn't need to worry about getting involved. No. In. <laughs> he's got more pressing stuff Out going to Rowe. On. Rowe looks for the handball. Back to Gardery, but... Who would come out with that out of 10 players, Lockie, but the junkyard dog? Yeah, Jake Smith. Three of them hanging on to him. He's still got his kick away. Still some scrappy footy over the line it goes, and we'll get a ball in. Still a long way from home for the Ruse. Look, they've, I know it's a, a cliched saying, but do, do they need the first goal of this quarter or what? Oh, absolutely they do. Nice kick. tackle there from Wucky. Keeps the ball in. That's what was missing in the first half. Remark were able to rebound off half back without any pressure. Barmer have lifted that up and have got the tackling pressure across half forward, holding that ball in the forward lines. Yeah, it's a good kick out of the clearance there too from Butterworth up forward. It was pretty hurried, but it managed to get the right direction. Gee whiz, he's reading the tackle from the uh, opposition ruckman really well, isn't he? Getting his hands first on it at those contests, even though uh, Gardery's winning the tap. So a ball up. 
trying to get his boot back on Sam Butterworth, I reckon, here. Yep, back on. Ready to play. Just outside the Ruse attacking 50. Gartry flew high. Barmer going to get the free here. That will go to Bonnie, the opposing ruckman. No, Barmer Don't Manash. handball it. Go back and drive it long. No oh, handball he's done comes it. out. Oh, no. Small kick back in board. And this has been the undoing of the Barmer Monash Ruse all day. You shake your head, Novi Norton, because oh. you're frustrated. I like had a bit of a chat Monash. about it at half time off air, Lockie, that. They were giving that handball without giving it to advantage. Same then. See that? Yeah, another one, yep. another example. Or oh, push out the side there. No, play on the curl. Sometimes you either got to hold the ball or kick it long yourself. Holding the ball. Giving it to a teammate that's less than a metre away does not take the pressure off the teammate with the ball. The Rovers with the free kick here. There's Jared Rowe again. He's having a great game too, Lock. He's uh, high up in the best players today for Remark. Tell you what, if you, you know, got the best players from a Renmark Rovers game 10 years ago, you'd probably see Jared Rowe in there. He's going to be in there again today. Yep. Nice attempt at Mark there from Luke Thomas. He's one that hasn't had a huge effect on the game, I don't think, Lockie. No, just finding he's getting his feeling again for the uh, the Roos and the Lakeside. See, when he last played in the Riverland, it was more of a, a game where he could just drift off and get the ball without pressure and use it. It's changed a bit since then. You don't get that space. Garrett out of the middle with the ball. Oh, what a mark. Declan, Declan Johnson. Johnson pulled that one in one-handed. Great mark from Declan Johnson and he's there. he's going to kick from 55 out of the red mark goals, going towards the club room end. Nice. That's a defensive mark. Yeah, that was, that was Austin. See, there. I would have paid Jack that to Austin. Austin, but I thought he had enough of that. Uh, Jack Austin not getting the mark. Yeah, I'm 100% with you there. He, he took it to ground, but... Defenders do it tough. If that was a Ford, he probably would have paid that, giving him a shot at goal. <laughs> Ball up. It's a bit more exciting. <laughs> Tap sideways. Gillard tried to shark it out of the pack. It's tackled to ground, and there's going to be a free kick here to Gillard. No disrespect to the umps. It's a tough job. We'll push out Much there. easier from up here where we are. Liam Jackson getting shoved out the side there too. So here we go. We're going to get a free here. Well, hang on. Fraser Sampson in a bit of discussion with the ump, trying to find out. Will. I was nearly going to use an acronym that we can't use on air, Lockie. No. What's happening? He was asking in a yep. different sort of... And, I mean, the, the captain cannot speak to the umpire, but the coach I don't think can. So it was very, very nervous ground there. Yep. And I'm not sure if you want them to. Anyway, like I said, umps never change their mind. All they do is pay out a penalty. But Gillard now with the right Look at that. Oh, like a Damien Fleming in-swinger from 1998. That is a goal. Or if you're a golfer, Lockie, and you'd be saying, I'm just going to start this one out on the right-hand side and draw it back to the pin. That was beautiful. That was yeah. 1999 World Cup spec there. Yeah, which takes the score to Remark 7-8. Is it? Yes. 7-8-6. 50. 50 to Barmer on a 3-3-21. And I think in terms of the result of the game, that's over. The Rovers will win game one and take a little bit of revenge for last year's grand final, but you don't really get ultimate revenge until you get to this year's grand final, do you? No, but certainly setting a precedent early, the Renmark Rovers, that they mean business. Yep. And and both their gun forwards have played well and given them plenty. Here he is, Tim Wolford, two-time Willis medalist, starting to really let the old head come into the game. Interesting too, some of these Rover players that had a very big influence early... I wouldn't say drift out of it, but they can just take their foot off the pedal a little bit. Yep. But they've they've done that. They do the hard yards early, get that lead, set the tone, set the tone, and as yep. you said, yeah, just you know, once you're controlling the game, it's a lot easier. Yeah, Gartery up high, thumps it out, but who's he thumps it to? But the junkyard dog Jake Smith, who drives it forward, he hasn't stopped. He never does. Loose footy out the forward line. Barmer Monash still with some ambition and moving this one forward. They'll get the free here. Yeah, tackled without the ball, Austin. Dane? No, seven and a half minutes played. Fourth quarter, Riverland football on 5 m for the Riverland Motor Group. Must have thought he was still playing for the Rovers because he picked out a Rover player all on his own, but he couldn't pull the mark in. And that will be a ball up. 40 metres out from the Barmer Monash goal, Lake End. Can they manufacture something from here? So they're going to need a goal every, what, roughly two minutes here. Yep. Sam Butterworth having a spell on the bench. Saving he's, him. he's worked his tail off trying to get him back in. Wild kick from the pocket from the Barmer Monash Roos. Tapped over. Was on Mike. target but tapped through. 
ball now in the hands of Trevor Thorpe. He'll bring it back into play. Looking for someone to shovel it off to. Finds a player all on his own. That's Tim Blight at half. You'd say halfback? Oh, kind of, Almost. A, a high forward pocket, maybe. Yep. <laughs> and he chips it out and finds Brody Rover. Just taking the ball wider here. Yeah, look, taking a bit of the pace out of the game, too. Back to Thorpe. They're going to go yep. on the switch, the Rovers. Yep. Looks for a target up the middle. Oh, plenty of players to kick it to. He finds Dan Wolford, who has someone running for him out on the wing at uh, Townside. Into the sun. That was Rowe, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. In amongst it again this afternoon. Yep. There's Smith there. Their pressure on the ball has been uh, superior, but but helped by the fact that uh, Barmer Monish gave it too short every time and transferred the pressure to their teammate. Yes. Too, they didn't free up their teammate. They just transferred the pressure to him. So ball in, townside wing. What's going to happen here? Taps forward. No, it doesn't go too far. And umpires calling it. All players holding the ball, it is. So we'll just see what's going to go on here because it's the Barmer and Monash Roos with the free on the townside wing. Small kick, taking the ball wider. No one able to mark it. You Zernick don't... there with the footy. Lockie, when you're... Uh... 28 points down, 10 minutes into the last quarter, you do not need to go out wide. You need to shoot out the middle, which is what he's done right now. That was a very good contested mark taken there. We'll just stay with this Monish. for a second. We might have an update of some other games very soon. Yep. Mark on the 50 for the Ruse. We'll just follow this to make sure that we don't Lovely miss. kick by Aiden Lyon, who took that contested mark prior to this and shot it into a teammate who will take a kick from 52 metres out. Yep. It's Mitch Wellington, I reckon. Yeah, it is. Bombs it long to the top of the square, but no one's home. Oh, oh off Archie. hands. Reese Lehman strolls into an open goal and puts it through, which takes the score. Barmer Monash, 4 4 28, trailing remark 7 8 50. And Trev, you got a score for us? Thank you, Trevor. I probably going as predicted earlier today and and yeah. th through the week. Yeah, like um, well, good thing for Barry is they pushed him for a couple of quarters and then Loxton have got on top. Loxton are my smoky for the year, Lockie, but we'll have to wait until they till they line up against these couple of sides we're seeing out here. I think uh, Chris Bonney coming from the ground. I think maybe not injured, but maybe having a spell. So uh, 11 minutes gone, fourth quarter. They trail by 22 points, the Barmer and Monash Roos. It's Fiverr in football, thanks to the Riverland Motor Group and the Kia Sorrento. Now, the Roos need this next one if there are any chance this afternoon. It's the Rovers, though, that get the kick away. The Renmark go up in there attacking 50. See, Thomas, Thomas first to the ball but couldn't bring it in. He's yeah, dragged that one Whit back in. Whit He's in trouble here. Mitch Jenke, Whitbourne's in there too, sorry. Ooh. And umpire says, my footy. Gee whiz, he dragged that one in almost worse than Sam Draper did last night at the Adelaide no, Oval. Got away with it as well. 22 points is the margin. Here at Fiverr and Football this afternoon. Going towards the Renmark end, Garrett. Gee, that was a clumsy tackle, but he got away with it. And the ball goes out to Austin Dane. Handballs to Spillers. He's had a great game too. He hasn't given up, but yeah. he's turned it over in the middle of the ground. Still loose footy. Harrison... Thorpe Hold the too. ball. Okay. Good tackle, so, uh, young Matthew Watke. So we've got Watke here now with the footy. What I liked about that is the ruse going down the middle. So Watke with the footy in the centre square. What can he make with this? Don't go Can't there, waste son. any time. Keep it going down the middle. Back to Spilius, who's in the dead set centre of the ground. We'll kick off the spot where the umps throw it up. The ruse trail by 22. Yep. What can they do? Up to half forward, but intercept mark there. and he Picks out Matt Smith from the Rovers, all on his own. Takes it on the chest. Shoots it out to Dan Austin, to Dan Wolford. Bombs it up to the attacking Over 50. Over to Herador. Jared Rowe. Shoots it forward. Couple Rowe. of bites at it. Couldn't quite mark it. Can the Roos clear this one out? They can't afford to leak another goal here. No. Justin Bonney with the ball. Looks up. Shoots it out to centre wing. Two or two Rovers on to... Onto the junkyard dog, who had no alternative but to wrestle his player to the ground. At least he held up the flow of the ball. Um, Free kick to Dan Wolford on the wing. Kick up to Zunik. He now drives it into the attacking 50. It's a wobbly old wild high kick. No one able to get underneath it. 
He got going. a little bit of attention after he kicked that, but it was as he kicked it and no damage done. Spilios. Back to Spilios. Is it Ruse now that try to clear this one out? Got to get it boundary side. Get it over the line, boys. I think it's probably the best hope here. Still in play. 13 minutes gone. The reverse quarter. torp back in. And Thomas puts down yet another attempt at Mark, but comes away from the back with it. Yeah, out to Wellington. Now, cup quick handball. What can the Roos do here? Still looks like it's going to go out. Boundary line. We might have an update from the Wakery Loxton North Clash. Uh, Trevor Scott in the Sideline View studio. What have you got? Oh, there you have it, Nobby. The, yep, just, uh, actually, I just got a text through just as Trev gave us that from a, uh, a Gary X from Wakery. Here we go on the Rovers now. Can they score another one here to the square? Oh. you got Harrison Brown going wide into the pocket. Hamble's back in board. Declan Johnson was the target. It's a loose footy. If the Rovers slotted one now, that it'd be a sealer. That was a good tackle by... Uh, by Jack Albrick, determined not to give away a free kick. He waited for Declan to come up off the ground so he didn't tackle him high. So a ball up in the fore pocket for all the, for all the Rovers. Austin in ruck against Tim Wolford this time. A ball break. coming out to Jake Smith again. He just has not stopped trying. Yeah, well, Ricky Garrett tried to run, but he got tackled. Now, I think for my money, that was holding the ball. He took him on, got tackled, and uh, I didn't see him handball or kick it. And now another ball up. We'll get just outside the 50. Umpire says my footy. But by and large, the umps hardly noticed him today. Done a great job. A neutral tap, you'd call it there. Didn't yeah. make any advantage. Wesley chasing the ball to the footy. Let go out, son. He's handball. Still in board. Druggermuller, a wobbly kick down the line. Somehow stays in. Reese Lehman and Blight. A good tackle there from Vanderwood. And that is another ball up right in front of us in the commentary position here at young, uh, this afternoon. Gee whiz, like a young Samuel Vanderwood, he is not taking a backward step all day and a good find for Barmer. Yeah, good tap over the top, but it finds the rule in Butterworth. Handball's back into Bonnie. That's the one I'm talking about. Did not even look at that handball. That second Shoveled handball. it out to a player. Had a, he had an opponent standing shoulder to shoulder with him. And it's Blight. Kicks into the 50 for the Ro Rovers, but manages to find Jamison Jam Whitbourne. He's, he's been serviceable, Lockie. He takes it wide to Butterworth. It reminds you, Nobby, of a training drill when there's no opposition. Yep. That look away handball, because you know there's no pressure. No one else is mm. going to get it. That's what it's reminding me of this afternoon. Here I'm just wondering whether the, whether the Barmer, or in that case, the Barmer player player is calling for it or not, or whether it's just coming regardless. And, and just what, another switch back the other way. We saw this last year a lot, this... Switch across half back, which is fine when you're only when you're a goal up, but not so good when you're four goal when you need four goals to win the game. They got to drive this footy down the centre, but they still keep going wide, and that's going to go out of bounds on the fall. Yep. And it's probably been the story of the Ruse day, really, hasn't it? I mean, credit to Remark's pressure, though. Yeah, true. Coming up onto onto their teammate Rick Garrett here, game, first game back after 12 months off. Fight looks for Haynes, spills forward though, and it's. Butterworth that gets it again, a wobbly kick, but... Sampson, where's he going to go with this? Now, can't go down the middle, champ. you got Wacky in the middle of the ground. Just bombs it to space, kind of, but Jake Smith there, but he had to take on two players. Yeah. And once again, it's going to be a... Uh, this a is the gridlock. this is the uh, the problem that Barmer Monash have had versus uh, Remark. No tall, mobile forward coming to the ball to give him an option. In a weird way to describe what's Here going is. on... Jake Smith again out of the middle. But who's he kicked to? A short player at half forward. Is Wesley. Can he run onto yeah. it and make something out of it? The Ruse. They're going to need some magic in the next five minutes if they're any hope. What Barmer will be thinking, we need Mason Middleton and John o Beach ASAP. That was us. Didn't he hand that to him then? I'm not really sure, but Jared Rose in there again for the Rovers this afternoon. Tackled to ground. Bro gets the crumbs. He's seen that a thousand times. Blight. He knew where the footy to was going to go. And the Rovers go on the attack. That was again. Jenky shrugging off his. And Haynes mark this. Tries to go one hand. Aiden Lyon I must yeah. say he's done a good job on. Austin Haynes. drives it down the middle. Two on one again. Junkyard dog. Oh, is the umpire going to say something here? No. Uh, it's just had Matey Burn it. Matey Burn it. Like his hair, we'd say it in the old days. What would you call that? A bit of a spill us again on the. But find someone loose here with it over. Oh, dodges the first one. 
It's Haynes with the footy now. Long way Pl from... Oh, plays on three. from the free kick to Wolford. Zunix in there. Yeah. Back to Vader. Yep. Kicks to the ground. No one able to mark it. Thomas for the ruse, though, off half back. Lovely pick up. Kicks down the line. Finds Wesley, but spills over the top. Brown, he's been, uh, he'd be high in Remark's best players today, Brown, and used the ball beautifully. Went wide. Find out Smith. to Smith. Looks up for Gillard. Gillard's two on one, but hey, first one back on it. It's going to kick an easy goal. Soccer's it through. Kicks his fourth goal. Nick Gillard, first game back for the Rovers in a few years. And that's his fourth for the day. Yep. Nobby, you said he could have six kicks in a game and kick five goals. Well, he's had six and kicked uh, four. four goal two. Yeah. <laughs> Not far from it at the he's start. Actually, he's probably had eight kicks, but pretty good uh, pretty good avenue to goal, Nick Gillard. A class, class player, class finisher. Certainly is, yep. yeah. I mean, you don't play at league level football at Sanford for that many years and not be uh, that talented. It is 5 round football for the Rulay Motor Group and the Kia Sorento. Kia's most awarded SUV yet. 19 minutes played, fourth quarter. Yeah, three and a half minutes left on the clock. You'd be, if you're barmy, you're saying, look, we can't win it. How about we take off a couple of players and give them a bit of a spell? Think about next week. And I think they've done that. Chris Bonney on the, on the timber. First game back after perhaps a decade, according to you, Lockie. Yeah, it could be. Uh, 4 4 28 to 8 8 56. They're not yeah. going to leak a lot of percentage in this one. No. It's, it's, you're right. You could take up the players off for a bit Here of a Here he is, Liam and Jackson. He loves a party, and it's party time now for Remark. Yeah, we'll get a couple of good junk time goals yeah. here, I think, Nobby. Through he goes and finds Gillard. This could be number five. Yeah, which would be a damn good return for any forward uh, in a game like today when it's going to be eight goals to four, or it could be nine goals to four, and you get five of them. You called it earlier in the day. Five goal Gillard. <laughs> he's a beautiful kick of the ball. Can move it both ways. He's like a pro golfer, isn't he? He'll be kicking can it from. Fade it, he can hook it. 45 out. Slight angle to the town side. Sends it on its way. That's a beautiful kick off the boot. That's home. See, that one was the hook. And that's number five. That was the hook. He started it at the left and hooked it back. The one we saw here before was the fade. Started it on the right and faded it back. That is a, another goal to the Rovers. 62 plays, 28 on the scoreboard here at 5 and Football this afternoon. Thanks to the Riverland Motor Group and the Kia Sorento. Kia's most awarded SUV yet. He's uh, worth the, uh, the gate entrance fee to come in and watch Nick Gillard, isn't he? Well, we're going to have our awards after the game, but he yeah. could be featuring in and amongst there, I would have thought. Five out of nine. Not a bad effort. And, uh, hasn't, and he hit the post with another one. True. Kick two points, hit the post with one. So ball up, 21 minutes played, fourth quarter relay football on 5RM. It's the Rovers with a commanding lead, setting the tone early. Yeah, I think you can uh, not worry too much about the, the next two and a half, three minutes of this game and think, well, when Barmer really did put their foot down in the third quarter, they were able to match it with the Rovers. Rovers were just a bit too polished and jumped them in the first two quarters with a much better game plan. And better finishing by Nick Gillard. So ball up. Butterworth, he's been easily Barmer's best. Uh, followed closely by, I think Spilius has had a great game as well. And a few, hot, and a few um, you know, cameos. Been a lovely day at the lakeside, though, it must mm. be said. I yep. mean, we, we are uh, loving the game of football here, but we've got to remember how much of a beautiful setting we're in here. The sun's setting on Lake Bonnie this afternoon. Oh, Dragomala, whose second half has been uh, second to none for Barmer. Nice kick out. Finds Austin. Dane this time. No, sorry, Campbell marks it is. I'm sorry. Apologies, Campbell. Nice mark. Drives it forward. Looks but for a mark. Drives it forward to probably where he should be. Yeah. Just thinking back to last year's Premiership side, the one player I'm noticing missing a lot is Jack Sullivan off half-back. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Handball. See that handball again? Put Smith under all sorts of pressure. Taking the ball wider at all yeah. chances. I was trying to describe it earlier. Justin yeah. Bonney looks up, but Harry Beavis drifts in and takes a defensive mark for Remark. It's as if there's an exclusion zone down the middle corridor of the ground for yeah. Barmer Monash. Like it's a hot zone. Yeah. You can't go in there. You've his, got to take it to the His bog. Thomas uh, uh, removed himself from the ground with a... 
an ungainly walk. I won't say a limp. I was saying an ungainly stride. Maybe a, looked a bit like a calf to me. Right, eh? So could be some injury concerns early for the Roos, albeit mm. small. Rovers down the line. Ball. Finds Grokey, the debutante today. He's going to get a win in his first game. That's always exciting. Does that mean he gets covered in Gatorade, Lockie? Oh, it could be. Smith oh, from the pocket. Nice work by uh, Gillard. Centred the ball to the top of the square to Tim Wolford, who couldn't drag it in, and that goes through for a point, making the score 9-9-63, Remark. Comfortably in front of Barmer Monash 4-4-28. On the Riverland Motor Group, Riverland Football Broadcast, Kia Sereno, Kia's most awarded SUV yet. The Rovers, can they get another one? It's party time over. I think it might be. And there it is. It's a win in round one. Riverland Football on 5RM for the Renmark Rovers. 9-9-63 to the Barmer at Monash Roos at 4-4-28. A tight game early. But the Rovers set the pace and managed to control the lead after that. We've got two other big games, Riverland football to wrap up and cover. We will throw back to Trevor Scott in the sideline view studio. When we return, we will go through our awards and everything else. What have you got for us, Trevor? I know we're a bit ahead of the other games that are playing today. 